being sorted out. Good, somewhere over here, being sorted out. Having options. Options of what kind? To do whatever. Yeah? If you're a guy, there are ladies waiting. Then you select, you select the one. If you're a lady, there are many guys chasing. And you're the one who selects the, uh, I like that. Having options on this side, that's soft life. On this side, somebody shout out, what does soft life mean to you? I like that, having options. Just shout it out. You had the conversation. Just say, and I'll not judge you. I won't judge. Soft life, anyone on this side? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yes. Hefty inheritance from your parents. I can tell where you come from. My brother, I can feel you. Hefty. Now, if you don't have parents who have a hefty inheritance waiting, for, what do we do? I don't know. I'm not sure. Anyone else on this side real quick? Yeah, yeah. Shout it out. Hey, 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 say that one more time. Maisha Tambarare. Let me, ex let me try and translate for those who are online. Soft, uh, hey, hey. Easy, easy life. Things that are just flowing the way that you'd like it to be. The options we were discussing beforehand. Very good. Here we're hearing quite a few people online saying, living the abundant life without having to do the 8 to 5 p.m. Yani passive income. That's some of the responses that we're getting. Soft life for me is being able to afford anything that I want, getting to um, uh, take breaks anytime that you want, taking vacations anytime that you want. And so I thought when I was having this session, that's what I thought people were going to come and say. And that's the experience that we think soft life, hard life, real life means. And can I, can I bust all your bubbles? What, what usually precedes the soft life? <laughs> can you think, other than the ones who received the hefty inheritance, other than those guys, can you think of someone who has found the soft life without the preceding? And even those who received the inheritance, they, they have to wait. That's hard. Okay, the waiting is hard. But who, in the generating of the wealth that was being passed on, in generating it, was there some hard work that was done? Yeah. That's what we're talking about. And in this session, because when you come and you join Centonomy, people think it's about there's a secret investment, right? There's a secret investment option that you're going to come and hear about when you come to Centonomy, that suddenly it will take you from an investment of 5,000 shillings to 500 million in the next five years. Correct? See, that's what I think. No. Let's just be honest here. When we come into the class, it is about being practical. The steps that are going to take you towards the life that you want. And so when we look at those who are able to go on holiday, it is because they have generated the wealth that can allow them to go on to holiday, on that holiday. When you talk about inheritance, it was time, it was investment that allowed them to be able to pass that on to those who are coming in the next generation. And so it is for us to be real about it and to say, if that is what we want, then what choices are we going to make in order to get there? So our mission here at Centonomy is to shift mindsets so that purposeful people like yourselves who show up on a Saturday can be able to create wealth and to live abundantly. That is our aim. And so if you are able to create wealth as a purposeful person, we're going to get into that space that we're talking about. So success in any environment. Let me just do a, a quick question, right? Uh, is life getting easier as far as the economy? Online, even if you're not here in Kenya, is life getting easier as we go forward? Is there such a thing as inflation? In the class, in the class we calculate what inflation looks like, right? And we talk about uh, the first time you ever bought a loaf of bread, how much did it cost you? Somebody shout out. Four shillings. Anyone beat four shillings? Ken, you have just told us how old you are. By tell anyone bought a, a loaf of bread for less than four shillings here. So, and that was, you bought for how much? Shout, how much? Two shillings. And that was 500 grams, right? Two shillings and 50 cents. 
And that was how many? 500 grams. Today we are buying a loaf of bread for 400 grams and it's how many shillings? 60 shillings in your lifetime. When we are all retired, the next 20, 30 years, how much do you think a loaf of bread is going to cost? If you're saying 100, you're not even close. If you're saying 400, you're close. So somewhere between four and 500 shillings, so you'll be going to the supermarket with a 1,000 shilling note and coming out with one loaf of bread and maybe a pint of milk. You thought it was going to be less than that. But guess what? If we make the choices that we, we need to make right now, it will allow us to be able to live comfortably then. It is. Can I ask you this? In these hard economic times, are there people who are being successful? Are they earning? Are they getting passive income? Why not you? That's what we're here to discuss. Can I give you one more analogy before we hear from our first speaker? One more. It's hard to stay in, in shape these days, isn't it? I, I struggled. Towards the end of last year, I was at my heaviest ever. I, st I stood on the weighing scale, and all 5'10 of me was over 105 kilograms at the end of last year. And I could blame everything. See, there's sugar in everything. There's sugar in every food. It's so easy to get fast food and everything. But right now in this world, is there somebody who has a six-pack? Can you think of somebody who has a six-pack? So what's the difference between me and them? Is my whole 105 kgs at that point. What's the difference? The choices that we are making. And so if you are looking for that successful life, it's about the choices that we are going to make. So from the speakers that we're hearing here, it is possible to be successful in any environment. And that's what you're going to hear from every one of these speakers who are going to come and share with you. And when we come into the session, I'll, I'll come back and remind us of them. Just real quick, uh, for those who have just joined in and who are interested in getting that scholarship to the Centonomy 101 program, please do engage with us. Engage with us online and it's, uh, you, get, you stand a chance to win a scholarship, a partial scholarship to the program. How you do that is on all social media platforms. Please engage at, uh, with the hashtags, hashtag Centonomy Open Day, hashtag money management, and hashtag financial freedom. That's what we're looking for. And so, ladies and gentlemen, and those who are all online, Steve, how many are we at now? Almost 300, I think. We're close to that level there. We are over 300. We've already uh, joined online, and I'm sure there's more as they're coming in. Uh, to all of us, I want us to put our hands together for our first speaker of the day, Mr. Peter Mutinda. He's the president of the Kenyan East African Asia Africa uh, Chamber of Commerce. He's also the CEO of Richfield Capital, and he's here so kindly to share part of his story of success. Can we put our hands together for Mr. Peter Mutinda? You're welcome to you. Which one this one? Good morning, everyone. Good morning once again. Okay, good morning. So as you've heard, my name is Peter Mutinda. I also go by the name uh, Godfrey. My friends in the other side of the world, they say Godfrey. Godfrey. Others say Godfrey Peter. Godfrey Peter. However, I'm really honored to be here today. And as you've been, I've been introduced very well. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Waitaka. I am, I am the CEO of Richfield Capital Microfinance. I am the president of Asia Africa Chamber of Commerce, which as the name goes as buyers for Asia and Africa. I am the Africa coordinator, coordinator of my events international an event company that does international trade based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, is the HQ. I am really privileged to be here. 
really honored because I'm speaking to a bunch of people who are conscious about their destiny. I'm speaking to people who have decided to take a step towards their destiny because you chose to register, you chose to come here. I know we have a bigger audience online. You chose to be part of this open day organized by Centonomy, talking about soft life, hard life, and real life. And I like the way we started. I like the engagement that began. I was telling my colleagues here, I wish I could hear what was going on, or the, all the answers when you are asked, what is soft life according to you? I also wish I can know what is going on in your mind when you think about hard life, as well, real life. I am privileged to be here to share my life. I know the classes will be undertaken by the autonomy team, which I would really encourage you to, to register. So who is Peter? Or who is Peter? Or who is Gottfried? As some would say. Do I have those variants, those extremes of hard and soft? And real? I grew up in a family that was poor, not because we could not afford the things that made me think we are poor, but because of our relationship with money. During my, my engagement with you here, and the other speakers who would come here. I want you to think about your relationship with money when you want to demystify hard life, soft life, and real life, whichever way you want to begin it. What is your relationship with money? What I didn't tell you in my introduction is that I worked for about 17 years in the banks, in the banking sector. Sander Chared Bank and Barclays Bank mainly. My brother is wondering, can you see those years there or what? But that is true. For 17 years, I've been in the banks, in the finance industry. And I had the opportunity to interact with people in different levels. A banker, I say, is like a doctor. You know, when you go to a doctor, you will explain your conditions without hiding anything if you want you want to get help so most of the time the people used to come to the bank they would explain their financial situation to the latter things that probably their spouses wouldn't know things if it's a corporate institution things that probably their, their, their subordinates do not know so i want to say this your relationship with money is a big deal, right? I talked about my family life, and especially I can talk about uh, school life. I remember I used to be sent home for school fees because it's not been paid. My fourth year, my fourth year, KCSE, I think 1999, you can start guessing my age, I don't mind. I was sent home the whole of third term when I'm supposed to be sitting for my KCSE same year. I went back on a Tuesday and the KCSE was beginning on Thursday because of this issue called money. But my dad had time, had money to do two Tuesdays, it was Tasca mostly two bottles of Tasca or something. I finally lost my dad because of complications related to alcohol. I was orphaned because of that. And I took the responsibility of my siblings throughout campus. What I'm trying to say is it's about your relationship with what you have. 
you can use the situation that you are in to your advantage. The good book would say, all to work together for good. You can leverage on the situations that you have. Because as I stand before you here, before you today here, and the many engagements that I have had. By the way, when I got invitation, uh, sent on me to speak here, I was shocked. The following week, I also got an invitation by KTN News business thing to also to have an engagement. You can watch it on Tuesday from three to four. But why? I will be talking about the reality about my life, even when I get a chance in that place. And the things that I went through, they have worked for my good. If you can take advantage, if you can leverage your situation. Number one, I realized if my dad had some restraint, okay, we wouldn't have gone through what we went through. Probably I would be having my dad today. Okay? And I talk about it because before he left us, he reformed. Okay? He apologized to me because we used to confront against that, right? And he told me, never go this route, okay? He told me that. We spent all the money that we had for his medication, okay? And he left one small thing, a book. Yeah, I remember in the small room where we used to live in his sleep, one room. As a teenager boy, I used to sleep on the floor. And my legs inside, inside my mother's and dad's bed. And we have five siblings. So if it happens two or three have come to town, we'll be sleeping there. Okay? I know my wife is seated here. I know when we were building our house, she was wondering what's wrong with you. Because I really wanted to do a huge house. I wanted to ensure that my kids, each, they have their own room. Right? I live in a six bedroom house. I have three kids, okay? So most of the two bedrooms, no one is there. The visitors come. But it is based on what I went through. Get me right. Now, fast forward. I, I, my dad has died, and you can imagine KCP, KCSC rather. In fact, I had to break one of the weekends to go for barriers and come and continue the exams. And I used to tell myself, if you dare fail, Peter, 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 you dare fail, what will happen to this family? What will happen to yourself? That has been, that was, has been my impetus. And therefore, I used to work hard, okay? My whole story, my whole story, my whole story, because I, I know I have very few minutes, I don't know at what point I'll be back on, can be summed up in this. Work hard. Okay, let me begin. Build a profile. Build your profile by working hard. If possible, very hard. You may never know who is watching. Okay? So I began to look for survival. I, God helped me. I prayed hard. I worked hard. I read the Bible, the book that was left by my dad. I said, there's nothing else because he had bought a new Bible, by the way, which I stayed for very many years. I looked around, there's nothing is left, only debts. Okay? And the Bible, I read that book. And other books, like Think Big, John Carson, that was a real thing for me. Right? I did things. Like, well, I remember in my, I would write in my, in the, in, the, in the high school, my bed was on the wall. I had something written there, A plus. Like, when you wake up like this, I see that. I need to get in here. Crazy things, because I was like, this is for my survival. So, thank God I passed my exams, and I managed to join the University of Nairobi here. But I had to do maniacal jobs. I would wake up very early in the morning, go to Kikomba. Who knows where Kikomba is? Kikosh. camera. Yeah? For the online team. You know, the second-hand shoes. I used to go to our 
what market, what can I call it? The market where we have uh, second hand shoes, clothes, you know, used, sorry? To toy market? Okay. Oh, all right. So I used to go there and we used to pick, you have to get there very early, very early, five. And it was, there was mud, okay? It was mud, and I remember at the beginning, everybody used to have gum boots I didn't have. You have to get there very early, and I don't know why there was mud. Maybe I need to go there, remind me, one of these days, to see whether that matope, mud, is still there. I don't know for what reason. There was mud all the time. So you, you go there, and you don't know whether it is mud, with, you don't know whether, which water. Eh? I don't want to say that. So I used to go there and get the camera shoes, because when they opened that bag, the way they imported it, they, you know, Maybe around 6.30, they cut it and then they will pour the shoes. So the camera, which is the, the most new, because remember, these are second. They are used, right? The most new is picked by the people who come first, right? And when you pick the most new, chances of you selling is very high. Thank you. So I used to do that. Sometimes I make it. Sometimes I don't make it. But I still try to go there and pick what was left. I did... Boga. I don't know why they don't say Baba Boga. Man Boga. I don't know why they that. I did that. Okay. Of course, I tried. You know, where my mom used to live in a house, which is more of a kibanda as well. Outside, we used to do some Boga there. Buy skumas. Come. You try to make it. for In Kenyan style, you do what? You cut a cut, right? So you slice it in small, small pieces, right? I messed my hand. Please, remember, I've never told you this. Remember me to show you the, the scar. I have a scar to date. Okay? Because my mom used to do it for us in the house, but I'd never done it. So out there, I messed myself. I employed somebody to do that. Okay? It did not go well. I did not make money from that. I stopped. Okay? I went to, to buying this uh, leather, you know, the skin, animal skin, goat, sheep. I, just, I went to buying that. I go to somewhere down there, Kariako. We, we, we have it treated. Okay. Then they would slice it into pieces. All right. I buy buckles and I end up with a belt. I sell that. Okay. I learned tailoring. Yeah. Because there was a machine home there. I realized you can do, you can do, uh, you can do, uh, you can join pieces of a sweater and you're paid. Five bob. So if I do 20 of them, I make some money. Little did I know that this is what was creating entrepreneurial skills to myself. Little did I know that. I was doing these things while I'm in campus. So sometimes I may miss some lectures. That means I have to study at, in the evening, at night. Now, Today, I am in this industry that I am in. I gave you the titles and what I do. But my first degree was chemistry. I did chemistry. Okay? In the process of trying to survive, when I got an attachment while in my third year and fourth year to a company called Henkel here in Roraka, I used to work hard, not just for the attachments, uh, because they used to give us allowance of 300 shillings per day. That was going to do food for myself, my siblings, and rent for my mom's house, who was still alive then. One day, the HR, Juliana, I won't give the second name, passed by. And she, she said, Peter. She didn't say Peter. She said, Peter. I said, she said, I always see you here very early. Sometimes late. Every time I pass by here, I see you cleaning up because we used to do, it was a quality control laboratory. So we used to check, like early in the morning, I used to check the, 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 the toxic contents you are releasing to the environment because of the regulator. You know, NEMA, they always check what you are sending to the environment. So I used to go and pick that dirty thing, come to the laboratory, test, and write a report. Okay? And they, Everybody didn't like that. So as long as I'm in attachment, that was left to myself. 
In the evening, I used to arrange the files because we used to test viscosity for glue and all that. Thank you. So what happened is, uh, Juliana said, Peter, when you finish your college, please don't look for a job. Come and we'll give you a job. Okay? She noticed my hard work. It is a long story. I never got the job when I finished. And because of time, I won't go into that. But it, it inculcated and put something in me. Oh, this is what the bosses recognized. She was the HR director. It is a German company. Okay? And I went on with that. I got a placement jobs as a salesperson in Barclays and worked hard again. In six months, I got promoted to uh, a sales manager and on and on. Now, my, cap my disposable income was increasing by that. I was working hard, but I was getting money this other side. Okay? I went on and on. And I want to say this, when I was appointed as a CEO for Richfield Capital, Kenya, it's because my bosses, we were working with, I was, uh, I was a relation manager, I was handling their corporate business, okay? And in our interaction, which was like uh, over six years, maybe, they noted my zeal. Okay? Because later I was to ask, why did you pinpoint on me? Because they pushed me. You know, Peter, we want to begin a microfinance. Come and set it up for us. And they kept on saying, you have to come. You have to come until they won. And I left the bank. Then later they were to say, we have watched you for many years. That's why when you were in, back, in Santa Chartered, we were with you. When you left to Barclays, we followed you. And we knew we want to begin a bank one day. We should begin as a microfinance. And we knew this is the guy who would help us. Amazing. They have options, including their Asians counterparts who can do that. When I was appointed, the president of uh, Asia, Africa Chamber of Commerce in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, is because I was coordinating an international event called Africa Expo. So I took Africans to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia for a trade mission. And the board members were participants in that event. They watched what I was doing, and later I was called aside. I was taken for a very nice dinner, and I was asked whether I can, you know, take up that role. I coordinate Kenya and Eastern Africa. Same story. We like the way you really worked hard until the expo was where it is. My events international to elect me as Africa director, same story. Because I was trying to do my own business as an entrepreneur. I was trying to do uh, uh, medical supplies, equipment, and I went to Kuala Lumpur. They call it KL. I went to KL for an event, and I was trying to coordinate with everybody. They said, oh, where did you come from? Kenya. Sometimes when you say Kenya, they, it's amazing. Eh? Others still think, you know, one country is Africa. You look African, so they think you come from Africa. You say Kenya. It's amazing. But that's a story for another day. They appointed me. Same way, hard work, all right? They just love the zeal. They love the focus. I want to ask you a question. I have many other accolades that I can put here, but I want to avoid that. Do you think, do you think all those engagements, all those titles and levels I'm getting, do you think there's no cash benefits? Do you think there's no cash benefits? There is, right? But is that really only what I was going for? Yeah? So look into something that you can focus on. Or let's do this. Let's say this. Where you find yourself, the opportunities that are around where you are, please begin there. Work hard. Give it your very best. Uphold integrity and honesty. Right? Step by step. It may not all of it come one day, okay? Step by step. I'm in the fourth floor. I don't think I have reached where I should, but for sure, for sure, my kids are doing the British curriculum, 
right? They are not being chased from school. What, what was happening with me that time? You understand? I, have, I love to travel. I used to, to write to pen friends to the Netherlands, to the Holland, I don't know where. Okay? Last year, I did 26 countries. This year, I've already done six countries because of the other things that I do. Okay? I have not reached there. But let me tell you, there's something about hard work. Okay? Purposeful, intentional, hard work. Okay, do this. Work hard to get knowledge. To work hard. Did you hear me? Work hard to get knowledge. To work hard. Like now, you can join Centonomy, right? Learn about what they are talking about. Money and wealth. Okay? Differentiate those things. I don't have time. I wish I can get time one time. What is rich? What is, what is the difference between wealth and the rich? Which one are you going for? I cannot demystify that. Not now. Join them and learn. Once you learn, then you will chant, you'll direct your efforts and the energies working hard in a certain direction. Okay? And above all things, never leave God out of the equation. Did you hear me? I can stand on this thing here and say that. Okay? Never leave God out of the equation. You need him. Right? Thank you so much. I think time is, time is gone. I could not follow what is here. But uh, I'm really honored for that opportunity. Stand right there. Can we give him a hand? Thank you so much, Peter, for sharing that. So you came from a one bed with your feet under your parents' bed. That's how you used to sleep, correct? Now you have a six-bedroom house. Now do you just relax on a Saturday like today? What are you doing today after this? I know where he's going. I know where he's going. Yeah, sure. It's a six bedroom. There's a study room and all those many things. Okay. There's a garden and all those things. But let me tell you, I cannot sleep. I've seen, I've seen one of my staff here from Richfield Capital. I've seen. Who is there? Are there anybody from Richfield? Oh, she's actually my assistant at, at Richfield. Yes. I'm sure. Do you see me idle? How, how easy is it to get me on phone? How easy is it? Sometimes she's, she's, not, she's not aware. She doesn't know whether I'm in the country or not. And what time lives we're doing. And I handle a very critical part of the process in what they do. I could be in a different time zone. All right? But I'm working. So let, I know what he's asking. Don't you think there's a time you will get there and then you relax? Did you hear? Okay. Did you hear what the president said the other day? Did you hear what he said? And you guys, I hope you take time. Because that's another thing. Well, you're in your news, instead of watching just the soap, instead of watching those things, you, you also watch business news. News. I hope you can buy and read business daily. Right? I hope you can do that. The president was asked a question. Like, the guy was very diplomatic. Eh? So he asked him, um, you, you look very, very health, very fit. The word was fit. You look very fit. Are you dieting or what? Okay? Who knows what the president said? Who knows what he said? He said there's so much work here, there's so much work here that I cannot allow myself to be. Yeah? Yes, I'm trying to train myself to work. That is the president saying that. And he's not lying. Okay? <laughs> this work there. So nobody should lie to you that you're going to get to this level and then things. No, 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 no. But you can choose to enjoy what you do, right? If I come to speak to Centonomy, I enjoy that, all right? When I'm working in Richfield, I choose to enjoy that. My attitude has to be worked on, all right? Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Guys, let's put our hands together for Peter Mtinda, CEO of Richfield. He's right. I, we tried to get him on phone. You can't find him until you actually sit down and get that. I was taking notes. If you didn't take notes, take them now. He moved from science into finance into international trade. So for many of us, we're going to change our careers. He said, work hard, build a profile, read and educate yourself. Join into the sessions that we're doing here at Centonomy as well. Set goals. He had a vision board 
every day he would wake up and see the A on his screen. That's one of the things that we use as a tool there. And he said, integrity and honesty will take you everywhere. And he said, step by step. And finally, he said, never leave God out of the equation. One more hand for Peter Mtinda. Thank you so much for sharing that. As I said before, thank you for all those who are tweeting and those who are involved online as well. We're using the hashtag Centonomy Open Day, hashtag money management, hashtag financial freedom for your chance to win a partial scholarship into the program. I'm so excited to invite our next guest uh, because everyone else now who's going to speak has been through the Centonomy program, the, alum the alumni of the program. And um, I want to ask my dear brother, Kenneth Onjiro, to come and share his experiences uh, through Centonomy. Can we put our hands together for Ken as he comes to share? Thank you. Good morning. My name is Kenneth Onjiro, and um, the profession, I was a lab technician. I was, I was supposed to do your tools and uh, all that, but I eventually landed as a sales manager. So I'm the country sales head of uh, Mika Appliances. And uh, I love what I do because I ensure that you have the product in the market to enjoy yourselves with the blenders and appliances. Now, uh, lovely to see the room packed and uh, I know the online is also uh, blazing. And uh, it's always a pleasure to have, I think I follow uh, Centronomy online and you know, it's, it's lovely to always see how many um, presentations comes in with uh, um, the many uh, life, real life experiences. And amazing to, to be here. And thank you, Wedaka and Vashiki, for honoring me for this. I was at where you are um, about eight years ago. And uh, amazing, I would say. Uh, I thought. I had it all. I think when I went for the class, when I just closed the class, I went to um, uh, oh, oh, and I asked him, is there Centronome 102? <laughs> uh, but I had not actualized Centronome 101. So uh, one thing that I think as an alumni of Centronome 101 is, and I think for me, this was very hard. After I, I did Centronome 101, first week, second week, third week, and I went very excited in the house. And I told my wife, this is the thing now. Now this is the thing, we have to do this. And my, one of the greatest highlights that I left with Centronomy was my house is not an investment. And it was wolves, it, big time. And among us, the people who were very hard on us on that was the Raka, saying, you know what? I have my rental house. I have my houses that I'm not living in, and I've rented them out. So I went to my wife and I told my wife, hey, 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 hey. we are now changing plan. We are not going to build our house again. And she's like, no, that cannot happen. Around my circle of friends, 99% uh, of my friends all are living in the big palatial houses like my brother Pierre. Big houses, you go in, and my daughter always asks me, Hi, Daddy, you saying this was your classmate? Um, you used to sit together. No, 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 no. So I, I have constantly had to explain to her the rationale. And so, fast forward, after I went and excited to my wife and I told her this, she was like, She's not buying it. First week, second week, third week, fourth week, no, she's not buying it. And what did I do immediately? It was tough because it's not cheap. It's not cheap because when you get into this platform like this, don't think you, I don't think you have the immediate cash to just come and pay, invest. I call it Centronomy an investment. So I paid for my wife, the Centronomy 101, for her to join in with me. And for me, that was a blessing because two weeks down the line, there's a land I had bought in Gong in 2013 and i remember in centronomy one of the things that you told is these parcels and i know around here a lot of us have these parcels in katani in mololongo in gong in uh, whatever 
But how much value are you worth against every day? If today you are asked, oh, how much are you worth against the value that it is giving you every day? And I told my wife, no, we have to sell this parcel. But you know, two weeks before, she could not. She could not even think about it. She had sentimental value to this parcel. And I know a lot of you, you go every other weekend, you want to go and see the grass and see who is infringing into your land. It happens. I know you. You go to Gangundo Road every other weekend. Um, and we sold the parcel. And uh, our vision was to now go in and um, uh, build, you know what, a house that we can say we will have rentals. Because as, as Peter is saying, Sort of, there's no soft life right now, but I believe one of the things that you are taught in Centronomy is that you will not have a soft life right now, but try and build a future that you can build a soft life and a real life. Because as it goes in, in another, I am 38 right now. So in 20 years to come, I want to enjoy the soft life. And how, how am I going about this? So we sold the parcel. But it was tough because now, as you think about it, what Centronomy teaches us and what it taught me is to race against the flow. 99% of the things that will be taught in Centronomy are things that are not normal. And most of the times, I am seeing a lady here with ICA Lion. I love these people. When you hear about insurance, people run away and they say, no, 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 no. You have from insurance, you slam the phone for them. Most of the times you will find that it is things that are in your desks. They are there. They are here right now. They are things that you should be doing, but you will not be doing them because you just need to take action. So Centronomy teaches you to race against the wind. It teaches you that, you know what? You can be able to sacrifice today for tomorrow. It's not like you are supposed to be stingy that you are supposed to uh, now Tembe Kutoka town, you're walking from town to Westlands to just save at 20 shillings, but it teaches you to race against the wind to save to tomorrow and to have a, will, a, a, willing full, a, a meaningful life in the future. So I, to fast forward, I was now in this place where I want to build rental and every one of my friends, that's the race against the wind. Every one of my friends is living in their own house. Now, how do I start? You are here, you don't have, you have zero, and you want to start something. So uh, I think the key highlights for me was, number one, I learned that, you know what, I have to create my own space. My own space. Because I am different from Waidaka. I'm different from Waidaka, uh, from Washeke. I'm different from a lot of the people. And most of the people who stand in this platform, at times, are not the ordinary. They are ordinary. They were ordinary. And now they are not ordinary. Like Peter, you know, Peter, uh, he was ordinary. Now he's not ordinary. Someone would look like him and say, ah, no, Peter is the CEO. Uh, yeah, this guy is earning some good chunk of money. Where do I start from? So I have been taught that, you know, what, from where you are right now, for example, you're supposed to just do what? Register. Register with 20,000 shillings or 10,000 or 5,000. Or come in and say, you know what, I will come. I will pay it in the next 10 months. It's an investment. So I, I learned to, to, to action immediately. Is it that insurance policy? Is it just, it's free to open a CDS account. So I didn't know. Those are things that you will be taught in Centronomy. But to fast forward, in 2018, after I had bought this land and decided, now after Centronomy, I went and I wanted a parcel to build rentals. And I looked, and I looked, and funny enough, that's why I say you have to create your own space. Because if you do not create your own space and you want to run with the wind, you will never get that wind. Because when, after this today, you realize that you look aside, you look on the other side, and probably the only person that you have to run with is your spouse. So what you have to do, first of all, you have to bring them into speed because if you decide to run against the wind with your spouse, sorry, you're done. There's no way you're going. You, you are not going anywhere. So you have to bring your spouse on board. And I know there's a package for Centronomy for that. Um, so 
I went and I, 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 I had to look for a parcel. And when I was looking for a parcel, I was, everyone was discouraging me. How do you want to buy this? How? You want to, you want to build what? A uh, three-story building, three bedrooms. That was my dream. <laughs> you have... You barely have 20,000 shillings every other month. Actually, you actually have Fuliza every other month. So you, you want to build what? So the first thing, when you tell someone some, a vision like that, the architect himself charges you 300,000. And can I tell you something? I paid the architect 20,000 shillings to start off. Uh, later on, I, that money that I paid was all because I got an, a, an opportunity with Maskani, which is Bamburi. And uh, I, 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 I went, I paid up the monies. As we speak right now, I'm at a point of every single day, as I work hard, because I work very hard, as I work very hard, I work hard to ensure that I am growing out of poverty. Because after I finish my rentals, I will be looking towards saying that, you know what, I'm out of this. And lastly, one of the things that I will say, um, I love a, a, a phrase, a, a verse in the Bible that's Ecclesiastes chapter nine, verse eleven, that says, "I have seen, I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not for the swift, or the battle for the strong, or does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant, and favor to the learned. But time and chance happen to them all. You are here. You've been given an opportunity. You're given a chance. It is for you to just function." It is either today or today. Thank you. It's, so much. it's today. It's today, isn't it? Soft life, hard life. One more time. Soft life, hard life, real life. What he was talking about is true. Let me just clarify. Hey, a house is an asset, okay? It's just that it is a what we call at Centonomy a floor set or a consumption asset. What does that mean? If you own your own house and you live in it, does it put money in your pocket? What does it do? Now ask Peter how much he pays for his grass to be cut outside. Ask Peter how much he pays in land in taxes to the government for the place that he's living. Ask how much he has to pay for the place to be cleaned, isn't it? That's one of the things. So you want to ensure, and this is what we talk about in St. Paul, you want to ensure that you have other assets that will take care of you while you're in your own home. Is that all right? All right, next up, we've got our next speaker, a good friend now, we've become friends as well. She's a singer, songwriter, an all round great human being. Put your hands together for Olivia Ambani as she comes to share her experience as well. Good morning, everyone. How are you feeling today? Good, bad, in between. <laughs> So as Waidaka introduced me, my name is Olivia Mbani. I'm a singer-songwriter, a proud creative, and I attended the personal um, 101 Centonomy course. So I'm going to share a little bit about my experience. Um, but 12 years ago, I was sitting somewhere in these seats, and I was listening to people talk. Now, I did not register for Centonomy then, but I remember thinking to myself, wow, those people know a lot about money. But my journey took a couple more years before I did Centonomy. I literally graduated this year from Centonomy. Now, when I was sitting where you were, I had dreams, dreams to make money, but also dreams to become a musician. Then I did not know how I was going to make it happen. But fast forward 12 years later, I released my debut album. I've collaborated with people in different parts of the world. And I'm so grateful that that dream came true. But when I was working on my music dream and in life, there are different things that would happen. So I would make money and, you know, get to a place where I'm like, okay, now I'm growing. And then I don't know what would happen. Maybe an emergency would happen. And then I felt like I would go back to zero. So I started noticing this cycle. And when I talked to my family and I'd ask them, okay, how did you guys invest? What did you do? I don't know if your family talks about money, but mine didn't. They'd say, you know, you can try this. And they were not very clear. So I decided I'm going to start having money conversations with people. So I'd ask people, what do you do? What do you invest in? You know, what, what is it that you're doing? Because I started to understand that if I don't start talking about money, I'm just going to stay at the same level where you're in this cycle. You earn money and then something happens and you don't grow beyond where you are. So when I started talking to people about money, I started to learn about investment, different, different investments. But I still felt like I was stuck until the opportunity of Centonomy came my way. 
and I registered for Centonomy. And I want to share with you like three, four things that I learned. One of the biggest takeaways for me was mindset, mindset, mindset. I know that many times people tell you what you think about money, and even Peter mentioned it, is really important, but I cannot emphasize it enough. So I'd like to ask you a quick question. When was the last time that you said, I'm broke? <laughs> right? right? Did, you, did you say it recently, right? Or I don't have enough money, or this economy, right? <laughs> now, it's not that it may not be your reality, but what I started to realize is the more I start to identify with I am this thing, that's how I'm going to think. And in Centonomy, they really encourage us to change the way we speak about money, the way we talk about money from I am broke to maybe I am doing my best to figure things out. So you don't have to have the answers. So I started to ask myself different questions. And I started to look at my problems not as something that will limit me, but I can find a solution. And so from that, I started to ask myself, okay, what can I do differently? How can I start talking differently about money, thinking differently about money? Which leads me to point number two, which is action, action, action. In fact, the, the biggest cheerleader in Centonomy for Action is Mr. Waidaka. So he would come into our classes and he'd ask us, so you've been learning these things, what are you doing? Like every time he would ask, ask us, what are we doing? So I used to have, I had a business idea that I'd been putting on hold for three years and to sell undergarments for men, women, and children. And I was like, you know what? I'm doing music. I'm doing other things. I don't have the time. That wasn't true. I was just analysis paralysis. So I started to work on that business. And during Santonomy, I was very happy to make 10,000 shilling sales on, on, that, <laughs> on that business. Now, I know it may be a little or a lot to some people, but what I learned was I needed to start. The second thing I did when it came to action was I started to look at my rates as a musician. I was grossly undercharging because I felt like, no, I don't think I'm big enough, so I shouldn't ask for this money. But when I sat down and did the math, how much it costs to do rehearsals, hire a band, travel to this place, buy outfits, I was like, why am I charging this money? So now I charge way better, I'm earning better, and so my wealth is growing. The third thing that I did or that I learned from Centonomy was generational wealth. Now, how many of us want to build generational wealth? Anyone? Yes, yes. <laughs> so that's something that I learned. And one of the most amazing things I learned was that you can actually set up a trust. So I don't know how many of you have heard, you know, this line, oh, somebody's a trust fund baby, or, you know, they enjoy that sort of soft life. So in Centonomy, I learned that imagine you and I can actually set up a trust for our children or for anybody who, can, who you want to benefit from that. And so I was really amazed. I was like, me and me? Little me can actually set up a trust. So I learned about that. But the three things I learned around generational um, wealth was one, knowledge is power. Any wealthy rich person knows this. The, the knowledge you have will give you access to so many rooms. The second thing I learned was the power of community. Because being around all these amazing people who are learning, but also the trainers, I was able to now ask questions and now I have resources beyond. Like if I need something, I'll just call my back and be like, hey, by the way, I have this idea. What do you think I should do? And then the third thing that I learned was that you can start exactly where you are. Whether you have 10 bob, whether you have a thousand shillings, generational wealth is not built because you have millions. It's built because you started. So for me, that was something that I decided. I was like, I am going to change my life one choice at a time. And so I'd like to leave you by asking you a few questions. Number one, what are you saying and talking about money? Is money your friend? You know, what conversations do you have around money? Number two, do you even talk about money? Because the one thing I have learned is the more you talk about money, money will find you. So if you want more money, start talking about it. And if you have friends who are not comfortable talking about money, find new ones. Because you want to grow, right? Rich people talk about money, right? They talk about money. So get comfortable talking about money. And then the last thing I would like to say is, please start. You're one choice away from literally being a millionaire. I know it sounds like a big thing, but one step at a time. I truly believe that you can change your life the way I was able to change my life. Thank you. 
Wow, wow, wow. I think she deserves a better hand than that. Olivia, we want to find you on social media. How do we find you? Yes, so you can find me um, on Instagram, YouTube, but just look for Olivia Ambani. And also, if you want to listen to my music, it's on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. So just search for Olivia Ambani. I'm everywhere. Excellent. One more hand for Olivia. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, what she said is true. It is about mindset, mindset, mindset. I hope you wrote that down. Number two was action, action, action. And number three was what? Hey, did I miss? Did I miss something? That was the last point she asked you about generation. It was about you can start where you are, and it is about the choices that we make in the environment that you are in. What choices are you willing to make? Each one of us has made. Hey, in some area of your life, you found success. Am I right? Yeah, and it came from specific choices. So I want us to take just a moment. Somebody next to you, I want you to tell them, what is a hard choice that you made that brought about success? Tell them next to you, because we each have a story. Somebody seated next to you, tell them about a hard choice that you've made that brought about success in your life. Whatever it was, waking up early to study in school, starting that business. For those who are online, let me speak to you just now. In the chat box, please write down what choices have you made that brought about success where you are? Just take a moment, type in the chat box there. What have you done? Because you have found success in some area of your life. Just write that down. Yeah, there are some people at the back there who are still telling the story. Keep going, keep going. Yeah. Keep them coming. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm so humbled by the stories that are being told. I mean, somebody is saying they've started, a, they've started a savings account for their children. Somebody else is saying, sacrificing sleep for something that they want. Wow. All right, you have 30 seconds. Some of those stories are too serious, 30 seconds. Wow. All right. So, hey, we'll have time after this. You can continue afterwards. So, I'd like you to, for one moment, think about it this way. Each one of you, as you were telling your story, you made a choice based on an outcome that you wanted, right? So if it was like what Peter said, I want an A, you don't just get an A in school, right? It means you have to study. So if I have to study, let's, let's look at that process. I want an A. Did you see? That's the goal. So it means I have to do what? To study. Good. How do I make sure that I'm studying? Somebody shout out to me. Type in the chat box. I do what? Make time. Now, for different people, there are those who are morning people. There are those who are evening people. So you make time in the time that works for, for you, isn't it? So make time. Then what's the next thing? After you've made time, you've decided I'll be studying at this time. Then what must you do after that? Actually, study. So what happened was by setting a goal, it informed action that you needed to take. And a big part of that is that, uh, of what we do in the Centonomy 101 program, is setting goals so that it informs the actions that you must make, but you still have to make the choice that we had from here, from these people to do the work. And once you have done it, it results in the outcome that you want, but guess what? 
just like Peter said a couple of moments ago, and, and what uh, Ken was saying and what Olivia was saying, is once you have achieved that goal, guess what? There's another goal. So can I give you something that would help you? At least it has helped me on my journey as far as uh, growing wealth and also growing in purpose as we go along. Please write this down. Learn to enjoy the journey. Learn to enjoy the journey. So I told you I was at 105 kilograms at the end of last year. All 5, 10 of me. Uh, since the beginning of this year, I have now lost over 10 kilograms in this period of time. Because by the grace of God, I am learning to enjoy the journey. So I, at first, it was very hard because what was I aiming for? You say I set the goal. You know, you put down a number. I will not tell you my number because um, I'll tell you once I achieve it. Check back in the open day at the end of this year. In September somewhere, check back. We'll see when I've gotten to that goal. But I was looking for that goal. And so every day you go on the, on the weighing scale, you put yourself, then you're like, I, if you keep doing that, then you lose purpose along the way. So what happened was now change the attitude and say, I'm enjoying the journey now. So here's the example from the class that changed my life. And thank you, Sheke, for sharing this. She had told us when I attended the class, hey, I am a student of St. Anomie as well. We talked about the idea that how many of us would like to travel in our life? You want to be like our brother Peter, Kuala Lumpur, you want to go to Paris, you want to go, yes, good. So how many of you have traveled to Naivasha recently? You know, we are so busy looking for the Paris experience that we've never done the Naivasha. We've never done the, there's so much around us right now that we've never done. And so even on your investment journey, because we are real about these investment journeys, it's going to take time. But during that journey, what are you doing to enjoy as well? So if you're saying travel is important to you, then travel. I laughed at myself because a couple of years back, by the grace of God, we took, uh, we took a trip with my wife and we went to New York City. And in New York City, one of the biggest things is to go to those buildings. You know them? There's the Empire State Building. Uh, there's the Rockefeller Center. And all you do is get in an elevator and you go up and then you stand over the city and you look at it. And let me tell you something. Let me inform you. Let me spoil a lot, okay? When you get to New York City, if you look over it, it's just buildings. So you, you look this way, buildings. Then you look this way, buildings. And a small area of green in the middle of it, the Central Park, okay? When I came home, I was so challenged a couple of years back because I've lived in this city of ours. And how many of you have ever gone to KICC and overlooked our own city of Nairobi? Which is even more, let me tell you, let me tell you, it is even more beautiful than that New York City that I went to look at. It's just because I saw them in the movies. And it's only 200 bob as a citizen to be able to go up there. Have you been there? Three, four, five, five of us. So there's an experience that we're waiting for. Hey, I'm trying to encourage you to plan for New York, plan for Eiffel Tower, plan for those things. But on the journey, are we taking in the experiences that we want when? Now. So it takes thought and it takes planning. And this is one of the benefits of the Centronomy 101 program. What you've heard from the alumni who come and spoken here before is that we are going to challenge you to think about your life. There's this sense in which people think that one day I'll just trip, fall, and I'll be wealthy. It doesn't happen. One day I'll trip and fall, a job will open up for me. One day there'll be a deal, a tender, that is going to arrive, and suddenly I am going to be what? Wealthy. Can I tell you the truth? Can I tell you the truth? Even when those opportunities come, because as you heard, Peter, thank you so much for saying that, opportunities always come. But it is the one who is prepared for an opportunity who takes advantage of it. So when a tender comes, if you've never done a small project, can you do that tender that is being offered? If a tender comes, you've not registered your business, can you be able to do that tender? You can't be able to do it. So let's be purposeful with our time and with our money. In the Centonomy 101 program, this is the program that you go through. We start off by saying personal money management. If you cannot handle 100 shillings, 
I assure you, you cannot handle 100 million. If you cannot handle $2 in your pocket, you cannot handle $200,000. And so we start off by questioning, and that's, it's such a transformative moment because most of us don't know where our cash is going. Everybody in the room, take out your mobile phone right now. I'm going to get into trouble because we have uh, the chief uh, financial services officer of the company I'm about to speak of just now in the room. Please get out your phone. If you are Kenyan, go to your M-Pesa messages because you have them, I know. Just go there, go to that place. If you're outside of the country and you don't use M-Pesa for all those who are online, please go open up your bank statement. In fact, first of all, do you even have your last bank statement? If you do open it up, I want you, don't even look at what you sent or what you received. Just start scrolling and add up the transaction costs for each one. Just do it, just quickly. Esther, close your ears like this. Just don't listen to what's going on. Don't listen to what's happening here. Just add up the transaction costs. Just add a few of them. Just keep scrolling through those messages. Don't look at what you sent, what you received. Don't, no, 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 no. Just add up the transaction costs. If you're online and you're in Kenya, please do the same. If you're online and you're out of the country, get your bank statement and look at the transaction costs that you have. Now, can I be politically correct? How many of you are aware of those numbers? In the last class, one of our students stood up and said, with what I have spent on transaction costs this last year, I could have bought a plot. Hold on, hold on. Esther, don't worry, I'm coming to you just now. What the problem was, not the convenience of the service, but a misuse of it. Because even a good thing can be misused. Isn't it? So that here's the thing. If I am sending to Peter, who's all the way in, in, in um, let's say he's in Kisumu. No, it was Ken, sorry. Ken was in Kisumu this morning and came this morning just to be with us. Thank you so much for that. If I was to send Ken some cash in, his, in Kisumu and I have a thousand bob in my pocket, it makes so much sense to get my phone out and send it. Isn't it? Saves me the trouble. But we've gotten so used to it that we'll sit right next to Ken. I have, Ken, I have a thousand bob in my pocket burning. And I say, no, let me use my M-Pesa. So we are out of control. So even if it is convenient and can save you money, M-Pesa has saved me hundreds of thousands of shillings, traveling, sitting in traffic, pay paying for parking, moving like that. But I can also misuse that same service. Do you know what you're spending? After that, now we begin to set goals. So some of us, at the beginning of this session, we figured out that a loaf of bread is going to cost you how much? We said it. Somewhere in the region of four to 500 shillings in the next 20 years. Did you know? Were you planning for it? Or is it something that you can begin to organize for yourself right now? After that, we get into the debt management. So, so many of us are in debt, whether it is mobile debt, whether it is credit card, whether it's whatever kind of debt that you're using. But are you using it for growth or is it taking you backwards? And in the class, we give you the tools to be able to manage and come out of bad debt. If you're going to take notes, write this down as quickly as you possibly can. The difference between good debt and bad debt. Here's a simple rule of thumb. Good debt goes towards assets. Did you hear that? So assets that are growing in, in um, value, they put money in your pocket or they protect your investment. That's a good debt. Bad debt, write this down goes towards consumption. So if you're borrowing to use and just eat, that's dangerous because there is no return and you're paying more than what is worth in that space. In the class, we show you how debt works. We give you a debt repayment plan that gets you out of debt as quickly as possible. And that's part of the aim of what we're going to do. Once we've done that, now we get into living abundantly because it is both things that we've talked about today, setting the goal and enjoying the journey. If you have not set the goal and begin to think how you're going to enjoy the journey, that's what the Living Abundantly module is all about. Now I know, people, why do we, most of us get into this autonomy class? We want to learn about what? Investments. I assure you, 
I can sit here and talk to you, well, stand here and talk to you for two and a half hours, three hours about shares. But if you have no goal, it doesn't help you. So you can write this down so that you don't forget those who are in the room. The best investment that you can make, because people always ask, what is the best investment? The best investment is the one that matches your goal. I hope you write that, I've written that down. The best investment is which one? The one that matches your goal. So if you have no goal, it doesn't matter what I'm telling you. Because even when we're talking about investing in the stock market, there are those who are investing for income. There are those who are investing for growth. There are those who are investing for storage, maintenance. Which one are you doing? So it will affect which share you buy, the timing of the share that you buy, everything that you're doing. If you don't know the goal, you cannot make an investment. And that's why we spend time before the investment classes so that you make those goals. Once you have done that, the investment classes are all taught by industry experts. So each one of those classes is not even, as Centonomy, we go into the industry and look for those who are experts in their field, and they're coming to train you on what works. They're not coming to sell you anything. And that's the difference. Can I tell you why? If I go right now into one of these offices here for all these real estate companies, I'll not name them, so you know them, right? If I go into one of those companies and ask them, I want to become wealthy, what do you think they'll tell me is the way I will get wealthy? Buy land. Because for them, the solution for every investment problem is what? Real estate. So if you don't have a broad perspective, and that's what we're saying, you cannot make the choice that is right for you. So in those classes, you learn from different areas of investment, real estate. We learn about treasury bills and bonds. You heard from Ken, who said for the first time, you're the one who was saying you went to Central Bank and opened an account. You didn't know it was free. First of all, many of us, have you ever been to Central Bank? Did you know that it is your bank? You can walk into it and open an account. So that ignorance is what gives us the problem. We learn about unit trusts. Hey, here's the one that everyone loves. Money market fund. All those in a money market fund, raise your hand. Look at them. They're all here. We are investing, correct? No. Can I help you with that? Remember we said the best investment is the one that matches your goal. Can I help you with money market fund you are saving? It's a unit trust, but for what? For saving. Are you investing? No. So how do we invest? I tell you, ignorance is a real issue. So in the unit trust class we have, we begin to describe the different unit trusts that are available. What they are, first of all. What is a unit trust? What do they do? Which one matches the goals that you have? So that we are not all in the same investment thinking that it is going to do, achieve the goal that we want. We learn about real estate. We learn about uh, the stock market as well. Because these are invest investment classes that will inform your use of others along the way. Because I know many of us are interested in, for instance, you're interested in cryptocurrency. You're interested in NFTs. You're interested in commodities. If you don't understand the fundamentals, you cannot be able to apply in that same space. So we learn the fundamentals so you can apply it in the area that you're interested in. After that, we get into the protection classes. And if you make money and you cannot protect it, you're in danger. We had it over here, and Ken mentioned it, I believe Olivia did, and, and, and Peter as well. They talked about this idea of sustenance. So when we learn about insurance, what does insurance mean? Is it an investment or is it for protection? Which one have you chosen? So in the insurance class, again, it is taught by an industry expert, and they're not coming to sell you insurance. They're coming to tell you what works. After that, we learn about estate planning from a lawyer so that you understand when you had, I could put together a trust. What does that mean? What does it mean for our kids? And what does it mean even as we move forward? When we learn about uh, tax, Many of us are paying tax whether we like it or not, correct? Do you know if you're paying more than you should? Are you getting all the benefits from the investments that you're making? What is it that you're doing there? And so we learn from a tax expert as well. After that, we put all this knowledge into a five-year financial plan. Why? Because five years is a good measure 
and it allows you to be able to adjust within that period for the next goal and the next and the next. That's what we're aiming for here at Centonomy. And so here's the thing. Within the program, it starts in the on the 8th of June. And it um, yes, starts on the 8th of June. And classes run uh, twice a week during the week evenings and on the weekend on Saturday morning. That's when the classes run. Okay, You only come for one class per week. So you either choose an evening class during the week from 6 to 8.30 or on Saturday morning from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Am I correct? Yes, that is correct. So you choose one of those two. And you come for one class per week for 12 weeks. Now, we are all busy, correct? And so on Tuesday, the meeting overran at the office, so you missed class. You are welcome to come on Saturday. On Saturday, there's a wedding happening. I can't make it for class that day. You're welcome to come in on Tuesday. And something that is becoming so real, especially for those who are online, is that people are saying, hey, I didn't. I, I, I understood the class, but I want to revise. We're seeing people attending class, class even more than once because the availability is there. All right? So please make that choice even as you register. And today, as always, during our open day, we always give a registration discount. It's only 500 shillings to register today. You can register. Um, oops. You can register on the... Uh, M-Pesa 98, you can write it down, 986850. I told you you're using M-Pesa. We are customers. Fear not. 986850. 986850 is the M-Pesa. You put in your name and the number 101 afterwards. Take advantage of the discount on the registration. Usually it's 1,500. Always during our open days today, 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 you're going to register at only 500 shillings through that M-Pesa. And I know online, I know we're going to be able to share with you the details. If you're outside of Kenya, we'll be able to share with the details how you can make that payment. I want you to make that choice today. 986850, the M-Pesa number, and the amount is only 500 shillings, and that will get you into the class. Once you have registered, we'll reach out to you and send you all the details. There's a full orientation pack that prepares you for class. We give you the payment plan as well. And the payment plan is flexible for your, for your purposes. So that we recognize maybe some, you don't have the full amount that is available at this point to be able to pay at once, but that you're able now to pay it in installments even as you go forward. So take advantage of it. And I know everyone in the room had, had that um, flyer that has been given to you. You can use it even as you go. If you didn't get, we can be able to get it to you as well. So make, take advantage of it right now. Register for the class today. And as we get... Towards it, you'll receive your orientation pack. And once you've gotten your orientation pack, you'll be able to come into the class starting on the 8th of June. All right. So we're going to try something. We have to be flexible in life, right? Uh, and we're going to try something in the next couple of minutes. Our dear brother, Mr. Johnson Mokazi, who had, we had invited to come. Unfortunately, this morning, he, um, one of his children was quite unwell, and he wasn't able to make it here. But he said, well, I'm going to try and log in online. So we're going to try something. We're going to try and see if we can get him up on the screen now and listen to his story shortly. And once we've done that, then we'll move on from there. So guys, if you can help me out and see if we can get Brother Johnson onto the screen now as we go. One more time, 986850. Mm -hmm. For the Mpesa number, uh, excellent. excellent. There you go. There you go. All right. Wow. wow. There you are. 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 Well, thank you so much. So My much. apologies. I, I, I really appreciate the opportunity. So, thank you so much once again. And uh, many thanks for the time, the opportunity to share. Uh, when everything is all right, just let me know and I can kick off. But mine is just to say thank you so much for what you're doing, Syntonomy. You're blessed in many ways, changing lives one at a time. And for those who are joining us through 
the online platform and those who are at All Saints Cathedral. It's really a, a great honor because please take note of 8th of June. 8th of June, it's going to change your life. It's going to change your life. I didn't know about treasury bonds and bonds, but it's when I heard from Syntonomy that I actually walked straight to Central Bank and I started uh, engaging with them. So, Buonawaitaka, many thanks indeed. Once we're ready, I'll just kick off. But just to pick a couple of pointers that I noted. Wow, the best investment that you can make is the one that matches your goal. That's a gem right there. That's a gem right here, right there. And I must say that uh, Waidaka and I, we come a long way. And I really appreciate that he's standing strong. A man who definitely is committed to developing people. We started out, at least the first time we interacted was um, while we were acting. So I really celebrate his leadership and definitely his artistic ability to communicate information. That is something I value. If it's possible, if you can just let me know that you can hear me clearly, I'll appreciate so that I can continue on. Even via WhatsApp, if I can just receive a message telling me that I'm on and everything is set, I can continue on. All right. But Olivia, thank you so much for your remarks. Olivia, wow. I love the action, action, action. Start where you are. It's powerful. Start where you are. Start where you are. Very critical indeed. I was given about 20 minutes, but I'll bring it down to 10 minutes. It's 11.30. 11.30. So please bear with me. I'm just trying to confirm that you can hear me clearly. But uh, I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity. And I'll just kick off once I receive that WhatsApp message, WhatsApp message telling me, boom, start, start. So I'm checking, I'm checking, I'm checking, I'm checking, I'm checking. All right, go ahead. We can see and hear you. Fantastic. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor uh, to be here. I hope you can, you can see me as well. It's always an honor to serve as a uh, Communication consultant, moderator, guy in many ways. But I simply say, I am a voiceover artist and an inspirational speaker. And listening to what has been spoken already, you are loaded. I'm just going to simply share from my personal experience, as I said. I'll make it just less than 10 minutes as was initially indicated 20, but I'll bring it down to 10. But I'll take you through my journey in terms of my story. And just to give you a feel, uh, just a quick note. I've had conversations with Waidaka about investments, about all these decisions, goals and budgeting and all that. Listen. From my experience, you can learn, you can get the knowledge, but <laughs> listen to this. Results only happen when you act. Results only happen when you act. And you've got to act according to the instructions being given. And I'm going to share this very quick, quick, this quick clip. So you have, um, these guys are, and I'm sure you know this story there on uh, this team building session. There is an instructor telling them, you know what, this is what you're going to do. You're going to close your eyes. You're going to drop yourself. The rest of us are going to hold you. Everybody fill in and we're going to ask you to fall and then they will catch you. So you have to trust us. I'm going to count to three. Just relax and fall. Okay. One, two, three. Three. No, wait, no, 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 no.
You get the point. You can get all the lessons you can be in class, but it's sad. How is it that you can be in class and miss it? A lot of people do. A lot of people do. And I hope that even while you are in this session, please get every instruction. Please get every principle. Please start with that goal before you even begin thinking of investing. Very important, your goal. So very quickly with my story. Of course, a lot of people know this story. Born and raised in Kibra slums, my mother working as a cleaner in town, earning about 3,000 shillings every month. This was a, a muddy house, muddy floor. We did everything in that one simple house. One poem took me to Switzerland. And I'll come back to that story very shortly. Then I went to different countries, Australia. This is Papua New Guinea. Somebody paid for my school fees. Citizen Television gave me an opportunity to be a news anchor. Amazing opportunity. Later on, I started a TV station that didn't work after three years. We closed down. I went to India now as a business um, dealer, linking with different people. What are they doing that we can do in Kenya? My wife of 13 years now and our two children. My son who is unwell, please pray for him. My message always is you are precious. 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 But the reason why I also tell that story, and then you can see the changes from the beginning to where I am by God's glory, is also to realize that I am literally a walking warehouse of investments. People have invested in me. People have invested in me, and I'm going to share with you three people, uh, with you three people who invested in me, and that gave me an opportunity to now invest in myself and then now invest in others and the future. So I told you about Switzerland, and, I, and some of you know this story. So I get up in this particular meeting. I'm given an opportunity to recite this poem. I recite the poem. I don't, I don't even know who is in the audience. I go to the back. I sit down, and this gentleman stands up and says, Ah, I just heard that young man recite the poem. I want to invite him to Switzerland to recite the same poem during the World Health Assembly in Geneva, Switzerland. Shock on me. It was, it was my first time to board a plane, my first time to leave Africa. Of course, my friends from Kibra told me, you just hit a jackpot. Make sure you have a list of all your problems. And definitely I did. In fact, I wrote my opening sentence in case I sit down with the director general. He was the director general of WHO, World Health Organization. So I was ready with my script. I knew if I was going to have dinner with him and we sit down and he says, how was your trip? I had my script and I was going to say, yes, it was good. And I would start... Uh, listing all my problems and I was ready. So I get to Switzerland and I was told, and, and I'm told, oh, well, uh, the director general just wanted to find out that you were safe and, and all that. And then I'm waiting, I'm prepared. I'm literally reciting my script, you know. And towards the evening, I get the message that um, the director general actually had a heart attack and died that very night day before the assembly opened. This is him, gave me an opportunity. The following morning, the assembly was opened. The moment of silence. The assembly to observe now two minutes of silence. And after all these dignitaries stood, that's when I was given an opportunity to stand and speak. In his memorial, I checked the archives and I realized there was a picture of him and I hanging in one of the corners. The right thing in the right place, in the right manner. He invested in my life. He invested in my life. And so my question normally is who has invested in your life and what is your return? in investment and so constantly building working on myself constantly 
And for those who want to get into the media world, I give them a simple a simple assignment. Why don't you read for 30 minutes once or three times a week? Read aloud for 30 minutes. And um, you do that every single week. In two months, I think, there'll be a difference. Cut that story short. I move to my journey into the media world. This gentleman literally stands out as my father in the media world. And if it wasn't for him, in fact, I, I need to tell this. Why Zaka called me to be part of a skit. I hope you remember that. It was there was something being launched at Serena Hotel. I was unwell and I said, you know what? Why Zaka has called me. Let me just go be part of that skit. And I re and, and I'm part of it. And after the event, Jimmy Gutho is there and he goes like, you know what? Why don't you come to Hot 96? And that's how I entered the media world. This gentleman opened the doors for me. So I go for Waidaka as well, being part of that journey. At the same time, I tell you, focus on being the very best in offering the best service, the best service. The money comes and Tonham will now teach you how to handle that money. And of course, already, they're already telling you how to get that money. I'm about to close. I'm about to close 40 minutes past the hour. Final story of this lady when I left Kibra, my mind was thinking Kibra, Sheng, Nyaje Tukopoa, eh, Ninini, eh, Poa. But in the media world, you're not talking to your Sheng guys in your village. You've got to be a global practitioner. So there's a way you've got to speak your English so clearly. I'm not talking about accents. I'm just talking about clarity of communication. And at the same time, there is a way you have to present yourself in a believable and credible manner. These are skills that you've got to be trained on. I had to be trained on that. And this lady literally took her time to train me on how to read, literally articulate words. She's not here with us. But you know what? When I look at my life, I remember what she did, her sacrifices. And please listen to what she says about what you do today that matters into your future. It really is just a positive attitude how you feel about yourself what you think what you feed yourself not only nutritionally but also psychologically and uh, you know what you read what you allow yourself to watch these things all you know determine what you will be tomorrow what you ingest is what actually comes out so that's why I say whatever you do today please know it will reflect tomorrow Whatever you do today, please know it will reflect tomorrow. I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing. Good people, I am a walking warehouse of investments. People have invested in my life. Now the challenge is for me to invest in myself to become valuable and then now take that investment and invest into the lives of people and even in the future. And I finish with this particular video that some of you are very familiar with. This is the video.
that class and after you have learned go out there and encourage other people to also learn that's the beauty of standing up and making a difference in the lives of people so wadaka thank you so much syntonomy for shaking dog i i i celebrate you well done for what you do asanteni sana god bless you big time god bless you see you at work thank you say um take advantage of what we're going to do i want to invite my dear friend and partner at syntonomy the founder of syntonomy well shaken what if she can come and share some experience let's put our hand together for a shaken who's coming to share thank you thank you we can do a bit better than that isn't it come on guys there we go. Sorry, let me put my timers together because I don't want Vaidaka looking at me badly. Uh, all right. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, good morning those who are here. Good morning those who are with us online. It's such a pleasure to have you here today. Now, today as I was driving here, I thought this is the soft life for me. You know why? Because all I was in this open day was an invited guest speaker. I have done nothing I was told where the venue is I was told where the date is I was told these are your co-speakers I was told the time I show up but I went back this particular centonomy 101 started centonomy and I used to teach a lot of the classes but not just teach I would wake up between me and the house help we make the mandazis we make the sausages the night before I've bought the milk So we arrive I arrive there in time to set up the tea the registration table and then by the time people come in I've stepped in to be the teacher. And I think that's the thing about life it may look soft but there's a process to it and we've got to understand that. Does everybody here have something that is very good in their life that somebody else would call soft? Yeah? And remember it's a matter of perception to some people just because you have a food you have lunch you're going to eat lunch today that is soft life you understand that yeah so everybody has something and it could be more than that it could be the way you live it could be a car it could be so many things yeah there's something do you all have something that's just there it's just there neither hard neither difficult not particularly inspiring but it's just there it's just part of your life you have something in your life yeah and you have something hard going on do you have a challenge going on is there anybody here who does not have a challenge going on lucky you so imagine that life that's life and then it just keeps evolving in different ways so imagine you have these drawers in your house where you keep your clothes and the purpose of the drawers is to chomoa an outfit for you every day in the top drawer what do you think you keep in the top drawer the nice stuff the stuff you value you want access to it quickly if a visitor comes to your house you can quickly enter that drawer and change your top immediately and look fantabulous correct all right then there's the middle drawer eh it's okay but nobody is going to stop in the street because you're wearing those clothes correct Then there's the bottom drawer. Those cold July weekends. That cold sweater you've had for 15 years but it is so warm but god forbid anybody sees you in it. Yeah? And that's what makes up our life. But this is the lie we have been told that every day should be soft. Every day should be bright colors. Every day people should be looking at you and saying wow. and the world perceives us that way the day you have a soft look what does it the world assume you drive a nice car what does the world assume that your entire life is soft you have a nice sounding job title what does the world assume soft you have a business that has done well what does the world assume everything is soft then the day you go to the bottom drawer You're wearing that bad track suit that you only wear in the house but you had to rush to the supermarket. 
then unfortunately you are seen. What do they then assume? Gosh, have you seen Washeke lately? Things are hard. Yeah? Because the world sees only one color at a time, but you are not one color. You are all those things going on. But the lie, and we give ourselves so much pressure for it that it should be soft. I should aspire to soft. Anything less than soft or good all the time is what? It is failure. We are always in a, even to ourselves, beating ourselves down, correct? For not having it all together, correct? We are constantly beating ourselves down. Instagram, social media, the biggest lie ever. Everybody puts their soft life on social media. They are kids that are behaving. They didn't know they were being chaperoned just 10 minutes ago, yeah? So I went to, interesting you are mentioning, I, was, I came back from Paris on Monday. I went for a global conference, like the conferences where there are flags from every corner of the world. So if you look at my Instagram, you'll see conference in Paris. You'll see me in the cuteness of France, Eiffel Tower, you know, all those. And it looks such a soft life. This is what you don't see. To enter this organization that I've just been invited into, it was three years of being rejected left right and center. Being told I'm too small, I'm not the right representative for financial literacy, I'm not this, try again to be a member organization, do you have $100,000? Of course, I don't have $100,000. So we don't put that side of things. Centonomy today is 14 years. And I'm very, very proud of Centonomy. I'm so proud to be the founder of something that has had such a great impact that brings you all here today, physically and online. But guess what? It's 14 years of the entire chest of drawers. Yeah, this happened because of the entire chest of drawers. What I am most proud of and has built me more is the making tea for the classes. What has built me more is the time I couldn't even afford to fuel my car to go see a client. What has built me more is the time I had to wait four hours to see a client just to be paid 3,000 shillings to work on their financial plan. Now you're kept outside someone's office because you don't matter. Yeah? Those are the things that build us. KRA audits, loss of sleep. I'm so, so proud. And to anybody who has any sort of good thing going on in their life or platform in their life, don't we do the world a disservice when we don't talk about the other side? Because people want what you want, but they don't know what you have gone through to get there. So when you get a potato, is it hard or is it soft? It is hard. What does it take for the potato to get soft? Boiling. Heat. So in every soft, and it is fine to aspire to something soft. Yeah, I could never have started the autonomy if I didn't aspire to travel, truth be told. Yeah, I could not have aspired. Yeah, I could not have done this. Yeah, but understand that in every soft, there is a hard. So in whatever you want today, are you prepared for the other side of the equation? Don't tell me about what you want. Tell me about what are you prepared to do, including facing yourself, your fear, fear of rejection. Yeah, including not being able to get out of bed in the morning and wondering if something is wrong with you. Do you look at somebody else and want what they have? It's okay. I want what Peter has. But let me talk to Peter and understand what has he gone through. And thank you so much for sharing your story. It was so, it was so inspiring. So... We want the soft side of money a lot, what money can do to make our life soft. But we want the actual responsibility of creating and managing wealth. And that's why in Centronomy 101, yes, we can teach you how to make money and we do, but let's also teach you how to manage it, how to keep it. You can get out of debt, that's fine. You get out of debt by paying back debt. You can learn to pay back debt, but can you stay? out of debt, because staying out of debt means you investigate your habits, which is harder than what is going on in your life. You can get a house, 
But will you hold on to that house even when you retire and you no longer have a monthly salary? Am I speaking to someone here? Yeah? You can start a business. Any, starting a business is not difficult. Running a business is not difficult. But can you sustain a business to the point that it actually gives you back your investment? It actually creates a life for you. Are you willing to do that work? So those who benefit from the good and want to benefit from the good have to under, critically analyze, am I ready for the other side or is something thinking I can get it the soft way? So this is what does not happen. This is what is not going to happen. Soft life, the soft way. You understand? There's no soft life, the soft way. Even if you have a sponsor, there's hardship in that already. And putting up with them. There's no soft life, the soft way. Yeah? <laughs> I, think that, I think that's just harder, actually, yeah? dealing with that. So just understand, whatever it is you want, I wanted you to understand this. Whatever it is you want, there's an other side of the equation that you have to really, really ask yourself. So please want, there are opportunities. There is wealth. Don't be cheated. There is wealth out there. But do you want the other side of the equation? You, you admire somebody's career? Sit with them. Sit with them. Stop watching YouTube about funny people. Sit with that person and find out. Tell me about your failures. That is the most important thing. Then, as I said, they're the middle drawers. They're in between. And in between, life can look comfortable sometimes and boring at times. In between means you're making it. You're making ends meet. Yeah? Life is working. The kids are okay. You are trudging along. See, we like saying, how are you doing? Surviving. You are surviving. But it's okay, but rarely meets the description of fulfilling. But first of all, I want you to understand there's nothing wrong with having a middle in your life. And again, the mistake is thinking that Towards this journey, every day I should wake up in the morning filled with passion and purpose and reaching for the stars every day. Do any of you wake up every day? I, Olivia, you're a singer. When you're singing, we can see the passion. But is it every day? I can tell you sitting here for 10 years, it is not every day. Life does have monotony. And I think as we have gotten to a point where because the star, the celebrities are so highlighted and their lifestyles are so highlighted, we think that the monotonous part of our life, something is wrong. But don't you know, it's many monotonous things sometimes that get you a result. I had to teach Antonomy 101 over and over and over and over and over again. Have this open days over and over again to see, to see some of the results that we're seeing. The monotony of saving 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000 is what leads to the 100 million. So when we dispute monotony in our lives or routine, we are also setting ourselves up for failure because it doesn't happen an, another way. And then fine, when you're feeling what is not okay is to think that that is all there is to life and to get stuck in monotony only. But let me tell you something about the middle that many people don't realize. If you're feeling in that middle, it is the best place to make a change. What is in the middle of a fruit? A seed. Because it gives you a chance to reflect backwards. Let me tell you, this wardrobe, if, when you look back at your life, you realize this. In that middle drawer, there's like a top you forgot. That when you remove it, when you declutter a little and remove it, and then you wear it, it changes the whole outfit. But you had not put it in the top drawer. You forgot about it. So there are gems in you that you forgot as well. So even when you're feeling stuck or in the middle and feeling what, it's a perfect time to do something different to reflect. I actually wrote my book, Making Sense, which is outside in a middle season. Nothing spectacular was happening with the business. It was just, you know, trudging along. Yeah, just there. Then I looked back and looked at all the stories, all the people who we've worked with. And then came out and then came the book. If you're in that middle stage of life, people who are 40 and above, do you hear me? 
Sometimes we feel, oh my goodness, I don't have the right bank account. But it's a perfect time to look at what is my experience? What am I good at? And how do I position it going forward? So you have a lot to work with in the middle. It helps you see your wardrobe has actually come a long way. So work on that, but don't get into a panic where you go and now swipe your credit card to change your wardrobe instantly, to look flashy instantly. So what is real life? The combination of all that, the soft, the hard, the in-between, the entire chest of drawers makes up your wardrobe. Life will have some hard things going on, some good things, some in-between. And the aim of life is not for it to stop being hard or even boring sometimes. Jesus himself said, in this life you will have trials, but I have overcome. And it is to just believe that. And when the good comes, don't feel guilty about it. The aim is not for others to see how good your life is. The aim is not to be jumping out of every day with passion. The aim is not to get stuck thinking that in between is all there is to life. At the same time, not resenting the in between. The aim is to be crystal clear about what do you want? Why? Please write this down. Why do you want it? And what are you willing to do to get it? What do you want? Why do you want it? And what are you willing to do to get it? You, not what you have been told to want. You. And you know why it has to be you? Anybody want to take a guess? Because there's going to be hardship. Because it's going to be hard. There's going to be some work. There's going to be something to get it out of the comfort zone. That's why this wardrobe has to be designed by you. It is only you who can determine what do you want to wear. And when you look back in your life, and generally speaking, you can look back and start saying, I generally got to wear the clothes I wanted to wear. That's a good life. So define these clothes. Yeah. So the role of your chest of drawers is to become, is to produce this outfit. Your role, because the chest of drawers belongs to you, is to make, figure out what goes on the top, what goes in the middle, what goes on the bottom. So it starts producing more and more and more of the kind of outfit that you want to wear. Are we together? So how do you get the best out of your chest of drawers? I'm going to, there's so many things that we need to do, but I'm just going to talk about three things, money, time, and grit. Okay? Money. I realized in my journey, and I use this quote when I'm speaking, and it's in the book. It was the foundation of my book. Money is a tool for the life that you want, but in itself, it is not the life. If you want 10 million, when you get 10 million, what will you want? 20. When you get 20, what will you want? Even if you get a billion and you're still thinking it's about money, what will you still want? That's why a billionaire is still seeking more and more and more. So the gamblers who win loads of money instantly, instantly their life is made soft, correct? What happens? They are broke. They did not have the capacity to handle the money. So the aim is to reorder your finances to work towards your wardrobe. Is it a home? Is it a business? Is it to educate your kids? Is it to travel? Is it to leave a legacy? So your aim is to restructure that. Will more money be part of it? Yes, but it's more money towards a purpose, not more money for the sake of more money. Yeah, It's to start answering the questions. What are my risks? My wardrobe, is it causing a risk? If you lose your salary today or your business stops generating income today, like we saw over the pandemic, what happened in your life? What will happen? Then you know your wardrobe is on shaky ground. Yeah, so before you start aspiring for the stars, can you sort out that problem with an emergency fund? Yeah, before you start copying your neighbor and buying the, your neighbor's car, can you sort out that problem first? How do you get your business to produce? 
financially for you and for the people you employ. That's what, that's what money is for. So start asking yourself, what job description do I want to give my money? Give your money, in case you have not heard me correctly, give your money a job description. Time is the next tool. If you spend two hours a day doing something useless, following someone useless, traffic and traffic, <laughs> sometimes we can't avoid it, TV, whatever. If you spend two hours a day on something not useless, and I'm not saying we should never relax, I'm just giving you context. That is equivalent to 728 hours, which is 30 days in a year. If someone came and gifted you a month, what would you be able to do with it? A month. A month, I created Centronomy 101. Yeah? Those are the kind of hours I probably spent hustling this organization so that eventually I go to Paris. Yeah? So you've got to understand what are we doing with your times. Learn to stop. Think, evaluate. We, even if you have zero in your bank account, you always have something that you can use as long as you have time. And time is the one thing we can never get back. I can make money and lose money, but I can never get back an hour that I lost. Ever. Ever. There's no supermarket for I'm here to buy three hours. How much is it? There's nothing like that. Yeah. Then grit is, comes from just the understanding that there are going to be hard things going on in my life. I cannot take on a victim mentality. And your hardship is your hardship, and it is valid to feel bad. But you are not special for having problems. Leave the bottom where it should be the bottom. Deal with what you can deal, and then leave it. Put your mind somewhere else. I have learned to center myself on something that I have done well. So when I'm going through something bad, I always go back to a past experience. Yeah, whether it's with a client. In fact, I, I pull out a lot even from my childhood. Remember that day in the standard six class, you were fast because you studied so hard and people didn't think you could be fast. Pull out those experiences. Make yourself your primary motivator. It's good to listen to motivational speakers, but what about motivating yourself? There is something in your life that if you recall, it gets you out of the bottom drawer. The problem is that we keep going back to the negative things. So that you can keep understand there will be problems, but I already have the tools to actually deal with those problems. Then switch your mindset. What exposure do I need? What conversations do I need to be having? What do I actually need to learn? I started teaching money in St. Tommy when I actually had no money. So it was the opposite of what I should be doing simply by being exposed to people doing different things and, and seeing that even based on my own personal story, there was a gap. You don't wait for your problems to end before you move on. And then note the distractions that are in your life. Those ones should not be in the drawer at all. If something is actually a distraction, get rid of it. If a habit is distracting you, if you, there's watching TV for entertainment, but there's watching TV where you're actually addicted to it, get rid of it. It is what we call, in like Collins Antonomy, do you have a poverty support group? Exit the poverty support group. The whole life is so hard and we're never going to go anywhere support group. If you are chair of the poverty support group, please resign and save other people. If you're constantly in the mindset, I don't have enough, I don't have enough time, money, or other people's expectations are always weighing you down and distracting you from what you should be doing, handle it, yeah? Women especially, let me give you a shout out to women. We are always taught, please sort everybody else out first. And then when there's a little time, sort yourself out first. Please reverse that because it's weighing you down. It's time to ask yourself, what do I want to wear? Because guess what? When you fill your own cup, you are able to fill other people's cups better. Yeah? Excuses of fear. So I'm finishing. I want you to some, I'm going to give you some homework. Go and draw that chest of drawers. Top, middle, bottom. What is currently sitting at the top? And a good way to look at this is where are you spending your money? Where are you spending your time? You can't be saying top is my family, but when you look at where you're spending your money, it's mostly going towards entertainment. Then just face what it is today. Top is entertainment. Yeah? And then ask yourself, what do I want to change? 
what probably are sitting at the bottom that should be at the top or the middle that should be at the top? What's sitting at the top in terms of how you spend your time and money that when you look at it, it is not producing the wardrobe that you want to wear because the clothes you are wearing today are a direct result of the choices that you are making. Direct. Whatever is happening in your life, it is your, it is congratulations to you, but it is also your fault. Correct. Yeah, so look at that and then say, what do I want this to look like? So if you want more wealth, if you want a better career, you want to get out of debt, then ask yourself, what needs to change? And start walking the journey of let this life. Do not live this life. May I believe in an abundant life. I believe that everybody was put here for a unique purpose. I believe that there's a problem waiting for every person to be solving. Yeah? So do not live this life where you didn't get to live that life, which is what I call the abundant life, but it is a combination of all those three drawers in different times of life. And I do hope you will allow us to walk this journey with you, whether it's with, with your personal money, whether it's with your, in your business with the Centronomy Entrepreneur Program, and help you dress for the life that you want. Um, because of who the next speaker is, I cannot, I know Adaka will introduce her properly, but I know Esther is known for many things. I know her from the person who, now if I say how long we have been friends, <laughs> we will reveal our ages, yeah? But we're talking over, let's just say over 25 years. So I know Esther from that perspective. But I want to tell you guys something that is so important in your journey. The people around you matter. The people you bring close to you matter. Esther is one of my closest, closest friends. And we've been on a journey together. She's one person I've been able to talk about business, money, life in all forms of way and in a positive way. Sometimes we need to vent, but we come back full circle and ask, so what are you going to do about it? Yeah. So I encourage you, Esther is not in my poverty support group at all. She does not do poverty support, yeah? Please, especially young people forming friendships now, please, please, the people you walk this journey with matter. Thank you very much. I will be at the table after signing books for those who may want, but thank you very much. I'm only two minutes past time. <laughs> Come on, give a hand to us, okay? Well done, well done. It, it's difficult, let me tell you, when, when, when you're a speaker and when you've been teaching for, uh, I wouldn't say how many years, no, you said 14 years plus, to summarize what those lessons were. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't get what you're being told, please hear this. The people around you matter. When you see alumni sitting in the class like this, you're sitting with other people who are thinking like you. Look around you. The challenge that is going to be given to you when you see what someone else is doing. When I heard Johnson's story for the first time when we met many years ago, and he told me what he did to get to where he was, that challenges you to be better. And so when you're in a class with 50, 100, 200 people who are all heading in the right direction, it changes who you are. There are thousands of investments available to you today, right now, right where you are. Why aren't we taking advantage of them? Because many times we've never made a decision. Let me show you something before we listen to our last speaker. Most of us in this room have 500 shillings. If we walk out of this door on Saturday the way it is, where will that 500 shillings go? Shout at me. Where will 500 shillings go before you get, before you reach home? 500 will go somewhere. Where will it go? Where will it go? Over here. Yes. Lunch. Will it even finish the whole lunch if you go to certain restaurants? Okay, where else will 500 shillings go on this side? Shout at me. It will go to? Eh? Shoes. Ah, those ones that are just, they are laid on your way. So you almost fall over them as you're going through traffic, isn't it? 500 shillings, where else can it go? Where else can it go? Ah, here's the thing. You walk out of this door here. Sorry for those who are online. Just, just bear with me for a second. You walk out of this door, you look and you say, that matter too. 
I was going to use it, but you know what? Let me just do an Uber. The choices we make with 500 bob. I'm challenging you now. Make the choice to get into this class. That first step, it's always a hard one. Because it's com imagine it's committing and saying, I'm going to do this thing. You heard from Olivia, uh, where she's gone out for a second. You heard from Liv Olivia a couple of minutes ago. She said she sat in this room 10 years ago. Listened. But when did she do the class? Last year. And many of those who have been through the program come back and say, I wish I made the choice then. As Washeke said, the one resource you'll never get back is time. So get out your phone. Go to Mpesa. 986850. Put in 500 shillings. Register for the class. Put in your name and the number 101. And then we're going to head into that class. What happens when you make that first step is then you'll say, hey, imagine I've registered. <sighs> Let me go for the first class. After you go for the first class, then you say, okay, maybe module two. After that, before you know it, it is three years later and you're coming to share an experience like Ken here and saying, I've built up rental properties which are going to start taking care of my family. But if you don't make that first step, you'll never get there. It is my ultimate pleasure to invite our next speaker, who's the Chief Financial Services Officer of Safaricom. Please put your hands together for Esther Waititu. Thank you so much. A true, true pleasure to have you here. An alumnus of the Centonomy 101 program as well. Please share your experience. So good afternoon, everybody. So what Waidaka hasn't told you is also I've known him from childhood, so I'm not that old. So Waidaka and I grew up in the same neighborhood. And so it's really nice to see, you know, when Johnson talked about networks and people who have invested in others, it's really, really good to see that we've gotten here together. Great. So uh, Peter, Ken, Olivia, thank you so much for those inspiring words. We share something in common, Peter. Um, I'm also a banker, now ex, now leading Safaricom. And Ken, thank you. You reminded me why I needed to get out of my mortgage very, very quickly for my house. And Olivia, you're really, truly very inspiring. But let me just go to Johnson. That voice. Okay, the, the ladies here can feel it, but I felt something. He was great. Johnson, that was amazing and truly, truly very, very inspiring. So... Let me start, before I go to my title, whichever now will be relating to a soft life, let me start with who I am. So I'm proud to be here, not only as Washeke's friend, but also as an alumni of Centonomy. I have done all the courses, all of them, not because I have friends who run Centonomy, but because if I need to improve and if I need to grow and I need to lead others, the only way I can do it is by filling myself with knowledge. And that knowledge I have gotten. And I'm going to talk a little bit around how um, that has happened. I've done um, Centonomy 101. I have done entrepreneurship. I have done them. And sometimes I do feel like I need to do a repeat. So please do give something for the alumni so we can come back. Who am I? So I'm Esther Waititu, uh, an adventurer at heart. And I travel a lot with my friend Washeke. So I was green with envy when she told me she's in Paris um, and, and I was working, but it is, that is how life is. I've always wanted to visit very many countries. I've visited 25 countries and not because I've used my own money. And this is where wisdom and wealth comes in. The jobs you choose, choose them also wisely. The opportunities that present themselves. If you ask, please go and speak in Turkana go. If you're asked to go and speak in Dar es Salaam, go. And while you're there, take some time to look around and understand exactly what's happening there. Because when you start to observe what people do, you start to understand that experiences are not unique to us. All the issues that we're facing, someone has gone through them and they have a solution. So that's what travel does for me. Then the other thing is I'm an eternal optimist. I always believe things are going to be just fine. 
even the economy is going to be just fine. Yeah? No, you know that's a positive and a negative. Because the challenge with being always optimistic means that you lose out when things are really going bad. And so that middle draw that Washeke talked about, you might end up stocking too many things and they are not taking action. But that's me and it's important that I share. The other thing is I love the outdoors. I truly love the outdoors and small things, a plant, a flower, sitting out in the garden, that is me. I get my best thoughts when I walk. Uh, Washek and I used to run a long time ago, but that is when we got our best moments of insights in terms of what we needed to do. So why am I talking about the things that I like and why I like the outdoors? If I don't know what is important to me, it's difficult to determine how I'm going to invest. So one of the key things as we talk about living abundantly is I decided that because I love being outdoors, I'm going to invest in outdoor holidays. I'm going to plan towards making sure wherever I go, there's either the sea, a lake, a mountain, or a hill. And that's what I work towards. So I'm telling you a little bit about who I am because it's going to influence what my plan looks like. And it is true, in Centonomy, we did learn a couple of things. I can't remember everything because I did my course in 2015. Um, and that's a long time ago, but the principles remain true. Let me tell you one, which I think still disturbs my husband until today. One of the exercises you will do when you're trying to discover how you work with money is to take note of everything you spend money on. I'm so happy and I'm so proud to be an MPESA, leading MPESA, because now everything is in my statement, so I'll encourage you to do the same. But before that happened, I used to keep every single receipt. That's what we were asked to do. Make sure we keep every single receipt and note it down. First of all, it's the most tedious, as Washeke spoke about earlier, monotonous thing that you have to do. But when I did it, I saw exactly where my money was going. Not only did I see where my money was going, I also started to see where my time was going. My time was going to the hairdresser. My time, and these are not investments, because huh? you have to go back again to do your hair or your nails or whatever it is. My, my money was going to clothes. And I said I loved my children so much. But look, the money was going to different places. So it started helping me to discover truly who I am and how much I need to balance in terms of moving ahead. So where am I where I am today? Today, I'm just going to talk a little bit of what has shaped my financial journey um, as a human being. So. Growing up, and at the expense now, truly my age shall be revealed. Growing up, I grew up in the era where we had to go to the video library to borrow video, uh, videos and you, cassette, yes. So it was a video cassette player that we used to use. And one of my favorite, uh, um, now we'll call them a series, but at that time, one of my favorite uh, videos, video cassette was Knight Rider. How many of you guys can relate to Knight Rider? There'll be very few of us in here. But let me describe Nitrida a little bit. Nitrida was this black car. It was called Kit. Yeah? It was a black Porsche. You know, it was like an amazing car. And the driver of the car was even hotter. A guy called David Hasselhoff he was always wearing black leather. It's not the reason I've worn black today, but he was wearing black leather. So anyway, this car was state of the art. It used to talk to you, to tell him, you know, Michael was his name in the, in the movie. Michael, turn left. Michael, I see danger ahead. They'd always solve all the problems. And I was like, damn, I want that black car. I want that black leather. I want to live that life. Reality, real life. Where we lived, it took us one kilometer to get to the Matatu stop. So for me to meet anyone, to meet Washeke, to meet, I had to walk. Now, this is a story, and I'm just, I don't know where my ex-boyfriend would be, but any of you hears this, I, I do apologize. So I was going on my first date, and because I wanted to dress up and look nice, uh, when my parents would leave in the morning, you'd normally hike a ride with them and then go hang out in town. When you're ready to see your friends, then you could you'd go at the right time. But this time I said, no, I needed to dress up, and perhaps my mom and dad need, didn't need to see how I was going to go on this date. And so I wore uh, my, my nice dress up, did my hair. 
Um, at that time, the thing that was in was stompers. I don't know if you know them, but there were some thick black shoes. And yeah, anyway. So I've gone and I've gone to the movies. And remember, I've walked one kilometer to get the Mathri to take me to 20th century. So we sit and we've gotten popcorn. And I'm like, man, that walk of one kilometer was quite something. So I removed my shoes. Uh -huh. So who can guess what happens? The guy's like, have you removed your shoes? I'm like, oh my goodness, this guy is telepathy. He knows that I've removed my shoes. It was the smell of the sweat after having walked all that time. So what is that telling me? Remember now I've gone to the story of Knight Rider. Yes? My dream of driving a black Porsche car, my reality is walking one kilometer with smelly feet to get to the movies. That is a reality. But was life bad? No, it wasn't. I'm actually watching a movie and I'm having a good time. So the lesson I wanted to give you here around money and around what that means is it's in the small things that if you do consistently, you'll eventually get there. Fast forward. I can now drive a car of my choice. Night Rider may be, that nice black Porsche may be a little bit too small because also my life circumstances have changed. I have children. I've got aging parents. So that car may not be suitable. But where I am today, I can choose what it is I want to drive. But I had to have a goal. I had to aspire towards doing something. So it is in the little things that you consistently do. And remember the things that you have today did not land today. I think many of you are seeing me today and saying, okay, this is where she is. This is what she's doing. But listen to my story. I had to walk one kilometer to get to what I wanted. My first car, I had to really save. It was a carpooled car. When we used to go out, when we wanted to go clubbing, we would fit in another green Mazda. I shall not tell you the name of the owner. But we would be in a small hatchback, eight of us. And we'd all contribute for fuel. Okay? Come to a point where, as the support group that I have, we challenge each other to say, please, no, please allow me to pay. pay. Please allow me to pay. But this has taken a period of, of building up. So my friends, nothing comes easy and it comes over time. Because the second lesson I want to talk to you about is that money needs patience. Anyone who tells you that money comes quick, fast, it is a lie. It needs patience. And it needs you not only to save, to invest, like what we've heard we're going to do in Centonomy, but it also needs you to give others. I'm very inspired by what Johnson said. He is who he is today because he stood on others' shoulders. Equally, that is how we need to treat our money. When we make money and we save and we spend on ourselves and we do not support those who are around us, what is going to happen? In this city, you will see around every big suburb in, in the city, there's always a, why is there a slum? Next to every big, nice suburb. Any reason? Sorry? The reason that there is, is because in those informal settlements, those people support the ones who are living in the other areas. We're not always, we're not going to be at par at any point in our lives. But it is our duty when we have something to help someone else. It is our absolute duty. Because you cannot succeed when you see your brother or your sister or your neighbor suffering. So one of the things about living abundantly is also thinking about how do you share abundantly? How do you ensure that the people around you are also getting and sharing and partaking? An interesting thing, whenever a governor... Cabinet secretary gets appointed. What is one of the first things that they do? Exactly. It's a homecoming. Why do we do homecomings? When you win something, you do something. And we wait for people at, even our sportsmen and women, when they come back and they've won something, what do we do? We go and celebrate them. It's homecoming. It means that we are celebrating together and we're growing together. So as you think about how you invest your money and how you work with your money, it is important that you also think about what am I going to do for my neighbor, for my keeper, because we all have an obligation to rise together. Wangari Madai, for all the work that she did, has she lived to see it? Has her daughter lived to see it? Yes, her children have. And that is what generational um, 
wealth means. You do things that you may never, ever, sometimes even see. And that's what I want to encourage us. Even with our money, let's also make sure we're giving what to other causes, things that we may never see. But in the end, will make a very big difference. The third thing from uh, the third thing that I wanted to share, the third lesson and the biggest insight for me, is that you also have to take risks. And I'm an ex-banker, and this is scary to say, but you must take a risk. And taking a risk is taking a bet on someone or something that you're not sure is going to work. When Washeke started Centronomy and I've walked the journey with her, not in our wildest dreams did she imagine that she's going to influence so many people. When I was coming this morning, I asked why that, so how many people are there so I can know how I can manage my, my speech and what I'm going to say. And he told me there are 1,400 people who have registered today. When I came for my first open day, I think we were not more than 30. We we're not more than 30. So take a bet on something that you have absolutely no idea how that's going to pan out. And when you're taking a risk, understand the power of a network. From the 30 people who, in, who came for the open day that day, a couple of us joined. Those who joined and, and went through the process invited others to come. They have formed groups. I am still in Centronomy um, groups where we share ideas, especially on the entrepreneur side where people say, hey, I'm selling houses. Oh, okay, uh, I have released an album, like, you know, Olivia, you would have, and we support each other. So in the process of making money, the power of networks is so important. But let me bring it closer to home before I make it about a business. When I started working, I was earning money for myself and taking care of myself. Fast forward, I find a nice guy, we get married. How nice is it to have two incomes and taking care of each other? was exceptionally nice. Fast forward, you're pregnant and you're about to have children. And he comes home and tells you, my job, I've been made redundant. Okay? So that is a power of a network. Because if you was alone, it would have been hard. But we're together. And then you build things together. So you take risks. You never know. Even as you do this autonomy, who knows what's going to happen? It could be good. It could be bad. But the tools that you have in order to make you grow is what is, is most important. So the power of network. So from when I make the reference to my husband and I, it is the power of doing things together that allowed us to then scale. Fast forward, everything is now okay. I need to make a job transition. This job transition for me was either I go and work in another country or I'm really not going to have a, another job or an alternative that, you know, stimulates me. So did I do. I took that job. But what is hard about taking a job? Because men say, yeah, it's a job. You should be happy, right? That job required that I leave my children and my husband behind and go and work in a foreign country. For me, who loves the outdoors, who loves family, that is a very difficult choice to make. But to get to the soft life, to make sure that as a family, we'll always have you know, stability and support each other. Not that my husband could not support me, but with time, the small things that you do, you get into habits and routines. And to let go of those habits and routines means a loss on my side. I took the goal, I took the job. Children at home, husband at home, but COVID happened. So for many, COVID was a difficult time, for me, COVID was also indeed a blessing because it allowed us to then work together because um, I could do it remotely. That is the real life. To get to the soft life, you have to go through the real life. You have to go through the hard life. You have to be patient. Be an optimist, but be real as you go through. So those are the words that I want to leave with you. But if I were to summarize all those lessons, I'll encourage you in the following ways. Your call to action, as we've been told by Waidaka, Washeke, Olivia, I must always leave you with a call of action. You must take courage to do the things that you believe are important for you. 
even to drop the things that you believe are important to you to move forward. You must be patient. Nothing good comes easy. And in closing, the very, very last one that you must do is you must have faith to know that what you're doing, you will never understand what the implications are going to be, but go through the process. I never thought I would lead Mpesa. In fact, I needed to tell Waidaka that everything about Mpesa is about, let me go to Asheke's three things. It's about, you know, making sure you've got money. It saves you time, okay? And makes you resilient when you, when you don't have money also with, the, with our lending products. And so please just have faith that if you do the right things, the right outcome will come. And we never know what we're going to build. But if you start the journey, and my biggest journey was my financial um, planning. I finished my first cycle of my financial plan. And thank you, Asheke, I paid off my mortgage. I am debt free. But look how long it's taken me. I told you I did send on you in 2015. This is now 2023. So it doesn't come easy. And you don't know what the outcome will be. But you just have to trust and believe. So thank you very much, Waidaka. Thank you very much, Washeke. Thank you so much, Esther. Please have a seat. Washeke, please join, join us here. Can we give them another hand? Everyone who's come to share. Let me say this, guys. It's not easy to share your story like that. It's not easy to say where you've come from. But it's so important to share that story so that someone else can be able to follow up and get into that same space. So I thank you all for sharing so honestly from the very beginning. Um, and I'm going to ask my team if they're, if they're ready. We've got a small gift for you even as, as you come. And we're going to have a few moments right now just for questions that you have. So if you have a question, I'm coming down to you right now so that we can get uh, some answers around that as we close out. As we did before, it's so easy. Yes, please bring them up, uh, Steve. If you can, kindly as we go. As I mentioned before, it's so easy for us to live and not make choices. I want us all to make that choice and say, I'm going to get into this class. The benefit of it, as you pay the first, um, uh, the registration fee of only 500 today, then the tuition fee of 48,000, you, 48, you can pay in installments. So one installment per month as you go through, it'll be 21,000, 21,000, and then the last one, per month as you go through the program. So this is an excellent time for you to take advantage of that. You're getting a thousand shillings off your registration today. Please also take note of the amazing book written by our founder, Washeke Ndwati, Making Sense. It's available outside there and Washeke will be outside after this uh, signing uh, the book. So you can get one which is signed by the author. That's a really important one. Uh, so please take advantage of that. Here it's only 1000 shillings when you buy it here. Uh, but after this, when you go elsewhere, you'll find it at 1,200, especially with delivery coming to your place. So take advantage of that as well. What would you do with that? So if, you're, if it's okay with you, we'll just give those uh, gifts. Washek, if you don't mind, come and join me here, please. Uh, and the first gift, if we can, will be to our dear alumni. I'm going to ask Olivia if you can come, a small gift for you as well. Uh, so we can take some photos of that even as we go. Thank you. Let's give our hand even as we do that right now. Thank you so much. Oh, we have to get that photo right. We have to get it right. So there's some evidence of that. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you. After that, we'll ask Ken if you can come. Just a small gift for you as well. Thank you so much. Let's give Ken another hand uh, for sharing and being part of that. Yes. To my newest friend, because I only found him online now, and then we met. Uh, please, let's put our hands together for Peter Mutinda as he shared his story as well. Karibu, karibu sana. Thank you so much, and we want to get that right there as well. Excellent. Very good. Definitely last but not least, Esther, if you don't mind, we'd love to give you. Esther Waitito would like to give you a gift for sharing your story. Let's put our hands together for her as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Excellent. Very good. Thank you so much. You can have a seat. Thank you so much. All right. Good. All right. So uh, we'll take a couple of questions as you're taking that opportunity to, to register, guys. On the screens, you can also put that 
slide for registration so they know the M-Pesa pay bill. If you're outside, especially for those who are online, kindly type in the chat box and we'll be able to share with you the details of how you can register. This is truly an international class. When you come into the class, you'll be seated with people in that room in the Zoom class because they are all offered online. They're fully online. You'll be seated in a class with people from Australia, from Europe, from different places. It's amazing the experience you're going to hear and be part of. So because we don't have much time left, if you have a question, kindly raise your hand on this side. If you have a question for our panelists, I'll give you two seconds. Please come to the front here if you don't mind. That's only one. No one else on that side? No problem. Come, come, please, and have a seat here at the front. Here in the middle here, if you have a question for our panelists, please come to the front here as well. And I'll take only one more from this group here. If you have no, moving on. Good. On this corner over here. Thank you. Anyone, please come to the front here if you don't mind. And you, sir, as well. Those two will take from there. And from our good group here in the corner, you guys are experiencing the sunshine during the session. Anyone with a question from here? I want to give you an opportunity. Yes, please come and sit here at the front, if you don't mind. We'll start on this end, please. Please just mention your name and your question very quickly and who you'd like to answer that question very quickly. There you go. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. afternoon. Yes. Uh, my name is Brenda Maura. I had a question, and I don't have any specific person to um, answer it. I just wanted to ask, uh, one of the things that you guys have talked about really is the relationship we have with money. So I'd like to ask, what are the top three things, practical things that we need to have or keep in mind with our relationship with money? Yeah. Here we go. Top three things with the relationship. With mm, top three things. Okay. First, first, there's already a relationship existing. Yeah. We just move here. <laughs> there's already a relationship existing with money. And that relationship came from somewhere. So first, it's what experiences have you had with money? So something has happened along the way. It could be something your mother said. It could be something your father said. But there's something that has already created a way of thinking or belief system about money. Yeah. Secondly, so what are then the patterns that you are seeing with money? So if you're told money never grow, doesn't grow on trees and there's a scarcity mentality around that, then your patterns would be whenever there's an opportunity in front of you, to think why you can't do it. So you default to why you can't do it. Yeah. So that becomes your thinking about money. And the last thing is because you now understand that, what is the next best step? So change, what is the first thing you can change? Because I'm, I know I'm going to reject an opportunity because that is my default action. What's the next best thing I can do? Either talk, deal with somebody who can help me that, Oh, let me just invest my first 5,000 bob because what that does is I invest or I save it. I then start creating a new experience and a new cycle happens. So relationship with money is all about understanding that cycle. Your thinking, the belief system that has created, the pattern, and what you then need to change. And in fact, we have an exercise in the program. It's in module one where you go and do a personal assessment. One of the issues with doing a, a seminar and a webinar like this, sorry, you know, I have to keep remembering we are speaking to quite a large audience online as well. One of the issues with doing in a webinar or a seminar like this is you've written it, right? All the notes we've written, and then you'll go home. Where do those notes go? You kind of put them on a drawer, isn't it? With all the other brochures that you have received from every other investment opportunity that's out there, and there's no action. So when you come into the class, what happens is you do the assignment which is actually go home and assess why do you make the decisions that you make? And the next week we come back and we sit in the session and ask, so what did you discover? So there's an action assigned to it. That's the difference. Sitting in this room is positive. Well done. But it was just the first step. And if you leave it at the first step, it means like you step into the thing and then the next few days you move back. So it's moving forward that you want to do. Yes, quickly, your question. Thank you, Dave. And who would like Hi, to Hi, good you? afternoon. So my question is uh, relationship uh, with money. If like you are dependent all your life on someone else, like mostly maybe women, and uh, you get divorced, and maybe you've never interacted so much with money. So I was wondering, does the class cover that for someone who is maybe in their 40s and they want to start from scratch so the thing about money and i'll take that question 
so I don't put pressure on everybody over here. The thing about money is it is about, it is a skill. So anything that is a skill is something that you can learn. Many times we think about it as if there is, there is this group of people who know certain things that you don't know. You know that secret investment that we talked about at the beginning? No, no, no. It's a skill set. So it's to say, and we, and we go through the process step by step. We have people who are in the class who are in university level. We have people who have never been to school. At least they can be able to read, and they've never gone past maybe a high school level. We've got university and MBAs who are in that class and, and, and gone past that point. What happens is it is a self-assessment, and then we teach skills on how to manage. So, for instance, what Washeke mentioned earlier on, if you don't know your current mode of action, you cannot change that action. So we do a self-assessment. Once you've done the self-assessment, then we go through what we call the syntonomy A, B, C. Budget. Now, all pretty, who here does not have a budget? You have a budget, isn't it? So in adult education, we don't come and tell you have a budget. No. What we do is we challenge and say, what kind of budget have you had? Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? So we're teaching the skills of self-assessment and give you the tools. So, for instance, in the class, you'll receive the ABC budget, which gives you a breakdown on how you can assess, assess yourself and build for the future. We give you the tools of a balance sheet. that you can do for your net worth overall. Amortization schedule. We give you an emergency fund plan. We give you an irregular expenses plan. So all these are skills that you begin to apply in your current state. So it doesn't matter what area you are, there'll always be a challenge that you're trying to work through to move to the next level. Yes. So we'll take the next question here. If you can just, yes, pass it. Thank you. So, hi, uh, my name is Albert. Uh, a question to both Esther and Washeke. For a creative who is maybe in the middle drawer and you want to stay true to what you want to achieve, how do you continue to master up the courage every day to pursue whatever you want to pursue and to eventually build something like what you've already built up to now. Thank you. I want Olivia to be part of this because she's going to start as a creative and then we'll go. Um, I think the first thing I, I would say is it's important to know about money, whether you're creative or not, because it's going to influence your decision. So the first thing is being aware of money. Why is this important as a creative? Because then you're not acting from a place where you're desperate. Because if you understand how to budget, if you understand how to price yourself, if you start changing your mindset, you're going to be able to walk into a room and make decisions from a place of abundance. A very practical example I'll give is when I was working on my album, I did have another job that I was working on and I saved up in a money market fund, but that's because I had the knowledge. And so I was able to create the music that I wanted. Nobody needed to come and tell me you need to create this type of music because you need to have a hit in two, two years or whatever. So the first thing is have the knowledge. The second thing is build your network. Start talking to other creatives who are maybe where you want to be or even who are maybe at the similar level. Because when you, I'm in different networks that people have spoken my name in rooms that I'm not in. So when you build your network, it's not just about money, it's about the people who also empower you. So those are the main things I, I would say. You want to add anything else to that? Yeah, the other thing I was going to say is, and I, and I think um, it was mentioned a little bit earlier, don't give up. Huh? Even though you have to do another thing that you don't enjoy, that allows you to get access to the thing that you want to do, just keep doing it. I think the, the, the tools around the investments are really, really key. Because even though you're not doing something in your passion, but it's generating income for you, it allows you to then choose a lifestyle that you want to invest in. So please just keep going. Take that alternative, um, you know, uh, whether it's an employment, whether it's a, a different gig that you're able to earn more money, but just invest and make sure that you're saving towards that, that particular goal. Just to add, um, as you're doing that, and all that, you're a creative, so you're getting very good at your, keep practicing your skill. But ultimately, you want to figure out how do I build a business around that skill? So having a skill and building a business around the skill are two different things. Having the skill is important and understanding the skill and what it takes to make the skill work. But as you do that, 
start thinking about who, I, who exactly are the customers? How do I actually reach them? How does money around the business actually, actually work? That's what we teach in the Central American Mental Premier, but it's very important in terms of the thinking because a lot of people are skilled, but they don't know how to organize themselves around that. So take time to think about it, to evaluate who's, who actually is buying my product, how am I communicating? Is it to the right mark? Because not everybody is your client, yeah? You're a creative, but you, you understand what you're saying. But most people will be like, so what do you mean? Are you a photographer? Are you an interior designer? Are you social media? So you've got to become very specific about what, what it means when you're creative. Sorry, whether I have a mic, I, I read, I'm burning to add something. What, to, what you are saying about when you find you are a dependent and now you have to handle money. The, the practical things where that was talking about, but sometimes it's also just a confidence issue. You've come from a place where you depended on somebody and now you have this and the first thing to hit you is fear. Can I do it? And one of the things we do in Centonomy is actually tell you, you can do it. Let's go back and look at you. What do you have? Even their assets we call non-financial. Like he has just said, I am a creative. I am a listener. What do I make out of that? And we've done this with people who have happen and then they've been stay-at-home moms and now they're back in the workforce. But just by redefining how you see yourself, you will start to see the opportunities are there. So I just want to give you courage that there is something in you. Yes, that was a season in your life. It's over. Now you get the joy of figuring out yourself and how far you can take yourself. Just so that you understand, today we're speaking mostly about the Centonomy 101 program, but at Centonomy we also have the Centonomy Entrepreneur program. So in case you're in this room and you're wondering which is the class that I should be in, here's a quick way to figure it out. If your primary source of income is your business and the business is not working the way it should be, then you need to work on your business first because you don't even have the money to invest. So I would highly recommend if that is your situation, you're wondering which of the two classes do I get involved in, sign up today for the Centronomy Entrepreneur Program and the team at the desk there will assist you with that. But for everyone, because whether you're an entrepreneur, employee, stay at home mom, whether you are a dependent, whether you're independent, doesn't matter. Everyone needs the skill set of managing money and putting together a plan. So everyone in the room, Centronomy 101 is for you at whatever stage you are and you will find wealth. I t I'm telling you, when you're sitting in a class, I, I love this class that we did, where a, a lady in the class stood up and she said, today I am 61. I retired last year. Let me tell you my story. And we were talking about what now do we do in the retirement stage? So she was able to speak into those who are in their 20s who are also asking, what am I going to do at that point? So the joint effort that comes in the class is really powerful. Take advantage of it. As we go, there was another question here at the front. There is a microphone. Ah, good, you have it. Yes, please stand, tell us who you are and who you'd like to answer. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Moya Kuhora, and you'll forgive me for my voice being shaky. It's my first time addressing so many people. Just bring the mic close to your mouth like this, then we'll hear you. And I'm on the screen, so I feel like calling mama <laughs> and, and telling her, mama, I made it. Anyway, I've experienced hard life. Yeah. I'm experiencing the real life, and I'm also in the pursuit of the soft life. But again, you people tell us that Ujana Nimoshi, and uh, our decisions today inform our tomorrow. I want to enjoy life today, but still be assured of my tomorrow. And if you look at data from the unclaimed assets authority, there's billions of shillings and assets that is unclaimed. Mostly, and it's from my own opinion, mostly from people who tell so much, but they transitioned to the other world before employment. Yes. So my question is, where and how do you strike the balance between living that soft life today and still not get, getting worried about my tomorrow? Yeah. I think I need some water. Hey, hey, hey. Peter, prepare. I'm coming to you in a minute but we do it practically in the class. So when you had the Centonomy ABC budget, this is what the ABC stands for. A is your essentials. So you need food, water, shelter, education. 
You can't live life without those, right? So that's your A in terms of priority. B are the things that are important but not essential. There's a difference. Let me, can I give you an example? COVID taught us, yes? It is important to look good. So you go to the barber shop or to the salon, isn't it? To get your hair cut. When you couldn't go to the salon, did you leave the next day? Or to the barber shop? You did, isn't it? So it's important to go to the barber shop, but is it essential? No. I want to, it's not essential. Can you live without the barber shop? I said important, but not, it's important to look good. But guess what? I always tell people this, and it's not, I cut my own hair. <laughs> I do. Why? It was out of habit. By the grace of God, I traveled, I, I traveled, I was in university outside of this country, and there, there are no black people. So I went to the barber shop. This guy was just touching my hair and saying, wow, what do I do with this? <laughs> I was about to pay him $10 to put number one and just shave everything off the way I shave. There's no styling here. This is just removing all the hair. So I bought a pair of clippers and I cut my own hair. I've been to the barber shop for the last, since 2003, about five times. Okay? Why? Because do I need to? No. Do I look neat? I think so. Yeah? All right? Now, you may prefer to go there, but what I'm trying to say is during COVID, it taught us, imagine you can survive without. I didn't say it's not important. I said it is important, but not. So that's what B expenses. C expenses. If it is not A and it is not B, then it falls into what? C, which is everything else. Now listen carefully because this is where people get lost. Listen carefully. Every budget should have C expenses, including the life that you want. You put it in the budget. I told you at the beginning of this year, see, I had a goal. I wanted to lose some weight. I bought this suit yesterday just for you guys <laughs> because it was a, a reward for what I was able to do over that period of time. Now, I could be wearing the same old suits I was wearing last year and gotten them changed and all those kind of things, but guess what? I have achieved the goal, so I do what? You, en you enjoy it. And there will be new ones. End of. I'm telling you, I'm still working. I'm still working on this. Peter, what do you do along the journey to enjoy this life? That's a very good question. Um, I agree with you as well. I was in South Korea and I went to a barber shop and I wanted to do my hair. Then they looked at me and they said, but there's no hair to cut. <laughs> Boy. They're used to trimming. You know, they have long hair, different hair, right? So I had to look for Nigerian friends and ask them what you normally do and all that. I agree with you. And you see, when you talk about money, relationship with money, I think it's the real thing here. Money should not control you. Money should work for you. Okay. So when I make that money, and I, again, my wife is here because we, you know, we do this together and a battle about it. Okay? So I wanted to build a house. I will use stories because when we met, that's what you told me. I put aside my classes. I do lecturing here and there, but she told me the stories, and I think it's the best way. When I was uh, growing up, as I said, no house to stay. Problem, right? Because what I didn't say, even the loo, you go to shower, allow me to say this, you go to shower, you cannot flush that it was down here in your sleep. So you shower when you're seeing that mess there. Okay? Somebody online, somebody send me a message, you should write a story, and I think I'll do that. Somebody will do that. You go to shower from there. So I used to be like, life is supposed to be like this? Really? Okay? So I said, when I am making money, I'm still answering, when I'm making money, should my kids go through the same process? I said, no. So I wanted to build the house early. Not, not we, you know, my kids have grown up, then I have this house with many rooms and no one is there. We wanted to do it very early. And I think we had battles on that decision. She had issues. Why are you doing, why can't you, just three bedroom is enough. 
Okay. I said, I want to mention it. That's, I didn't get that one. I want a big compound where my kids can ride. Okay. I want to do Cabro there. Not even Mazeras, not hard stuff. So that we can enjoy that money now. Right? Now, the thing is, as we do all this, we are working hard. Right? And we are trying to balance. Okay? Recently, I have said, when we moved them to this British system, it's uh, maybe three times what we were paying. It's, it's a pinch. Okay? But I'm saying, if I don't do now, I will have that money. Because in the bank, you were in the bank, that unclaimed asset was always a big deal. All the time. I think we know many things about that. Right? There are so many things we don't. You know, there are some things I only say when I left the bank. And <laughs> yeah? So it's a big deal. So the thing is, you work hard, you earn your money, and you enjoy. I want to say that to the lot of restaurants. Huh? Okay? I don't mean the clubbing, the women and the men. I don't, I don't really mean that. But real meaning for life. One of the person who was online listening here, here from India is my brother. I, I'm, I'm taking care of him, right? Because we were ended up being orphans. I feel fulfillment when I pay. Can you hear me? When I'm able to pay his school fees and he takes the degree he wants. You wanted to do computer science? Go for it. You wanted it outside the country? Go for it. I feel fulfilled for that. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything else that can really compare with that. So, nobody's saying you will not be careful on your way, the way you spend the money. But nobody's saying you're going to kill yourself. In fact, I want to pay my bills and I want to make enough money that I'm able to save. Enough money, she said it. I want to make enough money that I can be able to impact the people around me, my siblings and the community that is there. Thank you. Listen, when you say enjoy life today, what does that mean? Like what? Give me an example. What does it mean? I want to buy a shirt worth 2,000 bob you want without buy... looking at these guys around the veranda. As you said, you want to buy a shirt worth 2,000 bob. What can we do to get a shirt worth 2,000 shillings. Do you see, when you name the problem, I assure you, you can find a solution. Where can I find, two, where can you find 2,000 bob? What could you do to earn 2,000? Um, I could sell your service. You could sell a service, like yeah. which one? I'm um, in occupational safety and health. Yes, if you went and did a consultancy for an SME, how much could you charge them for a session? A lot. Can you buy a shirt for 2000 <laughs> No, but... No, hold on, hold on. One second. Can you buy a shirt for 2000 Yes, I can. So but it, one second, one second, one second. Sorry. So the thing was, when you defined the problem, the goal, it forces you to take what? Action. And then you are able to move. Now continue. Sorry. Yes. That was based on the hard life I was uh -huh. talking about. Yeah. Yeah. For example, being brought up, yeah. you could see our parents toiling so hard. Mm. There is a life they didn't live themselves. Yeah. Why? Because they were taking care of us. Yeah. I don't want to get to that point where I have to do that again for the sake of my kids. That's I want right. to enjoy it, while I also want to assure them as much as they're not here, That's right. they'll... Yeah, they're coming. Yeah, they're coming. And believe me, they come quickly. <laughs> and when they come, ask Peter how much school fees is today, what he's telling you. So here's the thing. In response to what you're saying, I think that when many times people think about the soft life, they think it's a life without thought and planning. Right now, we have already booked our holiday for the end of this year. Why? Because it's cheaper today. If you try and book in December with the rest of the world, first of all, you won't get a, you won't get a ticket the ticket that you get will be three times the price that it is today. So when we talk about, when we're talking about this, many times people think the soft life is an indisciplined life. So when you see, I told you, when you see, go to Asheke's Instagram, please follow us all on social media. When you go to her Instagram, you see her holding the Eiffel Tower like this, okay? She, what you didn't see, what she told you from that story was three months, three years, sorry, three years, of hard work to get a, even an invitation. Not only the invitation, but to raise the funds to be able to achieve. 
to get the visa, which was such a headache. But then you see the end result. So what are you willing to do? I think this is the, the one more question. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, thank you. I will make my question short, like a mini skirt. Short enough to retain interest, but long enough to cover the subject. So, yeah. So, my name is Emston Amamo. I'm a speaker and a, a, a marketer. My question goes to, I think I'd love to hear the wisdom of every one of you, if that would be possible. Now, we live in a generation called Generation Z or I generation. Now, it's interesting in this generation because um, we have a lot of information around tech and everything. Now, my question is this. What do you think is the biggest mistake that my generation does around money? What, what do you think is the relationship that we just don't get right? So let me just hear that wisdom from you. It would help. Ken, he's a young man. Speak to him like a young man. What mistakes are they making? Because as we are no longer young. The mistakes that young people make about money today, I think I would take it back to a story that I have. The young people of today do not, number one, listen. They don't listen. Um, and listening is in many forms. Listening is in watching. Listening is in uh, um, walking through the talk. The talk. At some point in my life, when after centronomy, I think about two years, I called Vedaka. I told Vedaka, Vedaka, I am in stress. I have two million with me. I don't know what to do with it. I was in a decision making process of making a decision towards either going the rental way or going my house way. Now, why I brought that is because one of the things that young people do not do today is that they do not have people who can, or they do not listen or consult or work with people, right people who can be able to advise them for the future. And I think Osheke said this, that if you want to go far, if you want to do, go do the right thing, look at your network. But I can tell you for free, if you look at your surrounding right now, you might need to either shake off everyone, <laughs> everyone, literally, because you might be in the poverty mindset of people who are always borrowing you. Everyone around you is borrowing you because you're in the cycle. Yeah. So I think it is important to look at yourself who are your mentors? If you look at the stories from uh, everyone who has spoken, it is this is my friend, this is my friend, and this is this is the person who's led me here. And the second problem, uh, so network and your surrounding and your mentors. But also the second problem that I would say that is a very big highlight to young people today is that they want it now, and if it is not now, it is now, and they want it big. And they do not think about the process. You know, when I say right now that I have reached a point where I am building uh, an empire for myself and for my generation, someone comes in and they look at it and say, wow, how did you get this land here? Oh, you've done all these things. And they want it tomorrow. Yeah? And yet, in their own space, you look at them, they want to really flows over their lives. And it is important to enjoy life. But young people today really look at the point where, how can I make sure my friends around me understand that I'm making that life today? So take easy, take a chill pill and live your life. Live your life um, in a very modest way. And uh, don't really think about it that, you know what, it is all about flows mode and all that. But very important, remember that uh, today you are young, it's beautiful to be young, very beautiful to be young because you are able to make very solid decisions of your life. If you ask everyone around here, they wish they were 22 today, yeah? But if only you can retrace that back to mentorship, 
you will be able to go further and you don't have to really make the mistakes that you're doing today. And 10 years to come, you will now come and say, you know what? I wish I was 10 years. So, yeah. so some advice. We are just closing. I think it's the last question now that we have. Some advice. Don't just walk out. We were having a discussion. Remember, you were telling the person next to you about some of the hard choices that you've made for a good result. Continue that conversation as you go out. In the class, we have an assignment where you're required to go and sit with somebody who is wealthy in your network and just ask them, how did you get where you are? That experience will change your life because then you hear the truth about the story behind the soft life that it looks like. So start with that assignment here. Let's take the last question now as we go. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mary Nendo. I am in my restructuring career. Um, I moved from finance. Now I am in, I'm from employment to now self-employment. And in my restructuring journey, uh, I think for the few months, I am finding building the right networks is a challenge. So how do you analyze and know that you're building the right networks? And when you know a network is not fitting in in, your, in the goal that you want to achieve, how then do you drop that network? And thank you for this. And just to add on you, uh, sometimes you want to live an expensive life just to fit in with money that you don't have. Wow. So let's yeah. learn not to do that. Live with the money you have. How do you build a network, the right network? Okay. Um... So there are a couple of things. Building the right network, and, and I know you, you, you may imagine that you have to go out and start looking for people, but it starts small. It starts with your school group. Who do you go to school with? What are they doing? Because then they know you. You know, going cold and meeting someone who you have never met, it's very hard for them to trust you and endear themselves. So let it start with your networks very simply. School, even your relatives, they may know people, they work in certain places. That's also your network. Um, Another place could be even just your community. Who's your neighbor? What does your neighbor do? It doesn't have to be big. I think when you say network, it's a very big word, but it's just your community. And trust me, when you're looking for something um, and you ask this, this group of people, someone will know someone who can help you. Yeah? Um, one of the things that I discovered is if you are diligent around just keeping good friendships, you'll be able to access anyone you need to access. Because Nairobi truly is small. You'll make a call, someone who knows someone, someone who knows someone, and, and you'll get there. So that's how you need to build your network. But the thing that's interesting about your question is that you'll also start to know who your real friends are. You see, when you're employed, you've got a salary that comes in every month. It means you can afford certain things, it is predictable. When you go into business, you never know when the next income is going to come. Yeah, so you may not be able to do all the things you used to be able to do, and that is the true test. Will those people who are working with you when you're employed will they answer your call? And that's why I tell you, your network has to be those people you genuinely trust and will go out of their way for you. So that is how you build it. So thank you. So, last question now, very, very quickly, because we are being chased out of the room. The conversations will continue, they will continue. Yes, hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, yeah, I'm Faith. I work with an insurance company. And my question is, I love topic when it comes to do with money. That is one thing I love learning about. So my question is, for what advice can you give to the people who want to venture into business? Yeah. What should they do before they start the business? Because that is the area I want to do. And I want to learn more about that. You need good friends like Esther who tell you, <laughs> Tell, tell, tell her to just do the entrepreneurship <laughs> program. Please sign. I mean, just do it. Because yes, it's I say do the entrepreneurship program. Yeah, it's as simple as that. <laughs> do the entrepreneurship program. It's a skill set. Yeah, go ahead. But I'll just tell you, just start. I know people overthink it. It's not about having, when I, my first business, I made the mistake of overthinking it. So I got partners. I got an office. Whatever little savings I had, I put there. Because in my employment, I came with a mindset of that was the infrastructure to have for a business. I had a reception. I was like, reception is for who? Yeah. Later, I was like, who are you receptioning for? But in my head, I had all these phantom ideas about how a business is supposed to work. And I had to scale it down. And then I only re realized that all I needed was a laptop, 
access to the internet to do that same business. And my first business was in stock trading. Yeah, all that expensive stuff I'd done, and including the hustle of getting partners, I actually didn't need. I just needed to do what I said. Okay, then from my network, as Esther was saying, who can be my first customer? Where do I go to expose myself? The conference that I was talking about, Paris, that was not my first conference. I started seeing what is happening and entering. I only, I, I kid you not, I kid you not. I started entering events, especially the ones that were not too diligent about who's there. Yeah, just seeing who's there, who do I talk to? Sometimes it was okay, they'll also give me food and my financial situation is dicey. Uh -huh. But it's just that, start. So ask yourself, what's my next best step? Don't overthink it. So a lot of people, especially young people, because of all these noise about investors these days, they're waiting for somebody to give them a million dollars. Imagine, no, you're out to first get proof of concept. And it will then teach you, is this what I want to do? How do I tweak it? ETC, ETC, start. Tell me about your first customer, then you have a business. Yeah. Quick one, which I learned. Number one. The aim of every business is to generate a profit. That's the difference between a business and a hobby, is profit. The next one, which I didn't know when I started my business, I wish I knew, write it down. Profit is not my money. So come into the class to find out where your money is in your business. Everyone, let's stand to our feet, please. Well done for keeping up until this moment. You've done well. This is just the first step. Make sure you register for the class in case you need any more information. The team at the desk there will assist you. Thank you for staying this long with us. To everybody online, thank you so much. I saw people from India. I saw people from West Africa. I saw people from Europe. I believe I saw at least one or two. To all of you, well done for sticking it out this long. But this is just the first step. At Centonomy, we believe that God has put us in this world to make an impact. And so we thank God for everything that we have gone through. So for a moment, please uh, be with us as we say our prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to make an impact in people's lives. Thank you that you've put us in this world with a purpose and a mission, and that you have created us to bring change and positive change in our world and in the world of others. I pray as we build wealth, we will bring others along and build not only ourselves, not only our family, not only this country, but the entire continent of Africa and the world. May wealth grow from this place to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful weekend. Please do register. Make sure you buy a book, Making Sense, even as we go forward. It is right there at the end there. Please go and we'll see you in class on the 8th of June. In just a couple of weeks, we'll see you in class. God bless you all. Take care.